We've had a lot of fun playing a little bit of offline uh, strive here and there. The online tournaments have been good as well, but it's time to break it down. TNS9 leading off here with Guilty Gear Strive to start off final day. My name is Proxy, joined by King Jobber as always. Good to see you, sir. Absolutely great to see you as well. It's been a great weekend, and let me tell you, it's not one, but two Potemkins in top eight, along with two Gold Lewises. It may be the tail end of winter, but it is still big boy winter, all right? And we have a great top eight lined up for all of you here. Absolutely. And no dilly dally. We're headed straight to the stage. We're headed straight to the match here. We're going to have, oh my god, right away. We're going to be leading off with it, the Potemkin. Potemkin versus our own MFCR coming through with the Leo White Fang. It's going to be a good match. This is a frustrating <laughs> match for this the Potemkin is, side of things. This is where you get to become the scientist, <laughs> Proxy, all right? You've been Don't waiting for this spot, moment bro. for your entire career Listen, to see two Potemkins making a top I've suffered all eight. these seasons. I've suffered all these seasons. Bro, we what find, is that? I don't know what that is. Can we is. get the camera shot on that? It's Potemkin. Oh, it is Potemkin. Oh, no. <laughs> is that is that the PTSD Potemkin? Oh, my God. <laughs> it is! <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, when you got to play the Leo matchup? <laughs> yeah. Hey, me too. Listen, that's been me for so many seasons, but now with two Potemkins in top eight, the hope is arriving. Hey, White Wild Assault is the great equalizer. Potemkin also getting some really nice tools. The brand new special move in the form of Heat Tackle allows him to really close the distance in a hilarious, maybe not effective, but a hilarious way, right? Yes. It can work out, though. Like you said, really good corner carry, decent combo extensions, overall pretty okay damage as well. You're not going to see it that much, like you said, but it is a viable option for your combo routings, depending on the situation. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, having to contest with the fireball game from Leo yes. and the 2D run-throughs, things like that. We'll see if we can get those just blocks on the run-throughs, because that is, uh, you know, the big thing that a boy can do to land a or, or just that, or just white wild assault. That's number one. Count them. Count him, we're playing the drinking game. Oh, ready to the wall, gets the pop buster, half the life off the table, gets the OTG and sets up for the meaty, gets it again, and has to burst. That would have been another pop buster. Yeah, and the pop buster might have actually killed there, but look at that. He tackle right on in, grab you before the Giganta reaches, and that is a quick first round with a perfect from a boy. Yeah, just the absolute perfect way to set that up there. Push him straight out of it, set up for the pop buster for the second time. Tries to go for the car back, Megafist, not gonna work out there. Leo starting that vortex up. Yeah, but here we go, back into the Corner. Remember, Leo can take the corner if he so pleases, but instead we're going to send you straight through the glass. Get that positive bonus with already 50 meter up on deck. Okay, slide that connects, gets the knockdown. 5 P goes for the white wild assault. This is close. Super, I mean, 100 meter, he's going to do it every time. Yeah, absolutely. No reason not to, especially when you have Potemkin looming over you in the corner. Oh, that looked like it was going to cross through, but ended up staying same side. Tricky stuff from MFCR. Yeah, way to bounce back after kind of a beatdown of game one. But I mean, that's just kind of how the rounds go. That's the grappler mentality you see so often through all these different games. But juggles from Leo, breaks through the wall. Not too much damage here on Potemkin. A couple mistakes still left to be made. Yeah, again, going for that double slide head, just trying to find some kind of knockdown. But that DP is so difficult to deal with. The flash kick burst comes off, all right. And then we use the heat tackle to get on in, but there's a punish. Oh, not going to matter too much here. Gets the confirm, closes the distance. <laughs> the way that he just flies right in on you, but we're going to wake up with Super. Didn't have 100 meters this time, but it doesn't matter. MFCR knows that a boy is not respecting the wake-up games. IBFD working out really well, though. Gets the armor to break through. Tried to use the Wild Assault to spend a bunch of that burst. Here oh, comes the you're Pop dead. Buster. You're dead. No, still alive. But the fully charged 5D. Distance closed. Goes for 5P. Whatever it takes. DP lands for MFCR. Oh, there we go with the deflect shield. Get off of me. Put us all the way back to neutral. You just have to find that one single touch. Anything will do, and the chip damage on the hammer fall is going to do it. At that point, too, if you can just make him block, you can potentially set up for the Aegis Reflector one more time, which includes you so much distance and potentially provides so much chip. Game on the board here for a boy. Oh, and immediately White Wall Assault again. So that guard crush set up into the pop buster, taking half of your life. So nice he did it twice, Proxy. First setup off the rip, gets the counter hit. DP barely connects top of the helmet. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> Skates on in, then the cancel the hammer fall. Jesus, bro. One round away from getting a 2-0 lead. A tall mountain here for MFCR to climb. Has to put a stop to it right now. There's a great counter hit jump in. Gonna get the knockdown in the corner. Pull him straight out of the corner again. Gets the IB. Ooh, the patience, too. You see, he's afraid to go in and get hit by some kind of counter hit from Potemkin. 
Uh, trying to go for the swag combo in the corner, but is going to drop it. There's that 2D flying right over the slide head. Absolutely. Between between 2D and backdash, really good options to be able to stay off the ground in those situations. Uh, skids on in, finds the throw. He not even needing to tap into the 100 meter here. Still has half a burst as well. Yeah, but Bo Boy coming in with full burst here. It's been a tug of war so far, trading rounds back and forth. Let's see who's going to come out on top. Car flick doesn't get much. It's the burst. Yeah, and you can see MFCR is now trying to look for those whiff punishes, Jeez. right? Really just hanging out at that far slash range and the 2D range, waiting for a boy hits a button, and it's working out perfectly. Pause the bonus, meter racking up. Trying to go with the standing heavy, not gonna find much. 2D missile drop kick for the second time, able to connect. Doesn't quite build the bar, but is able to get the shatter. Positive bonus racking up again. Boy, maybe out of this one. Oh no. Tried to go for some kind of tricky pop buster situation there, but it wasn't going to work. And the whiff throw means that we are tied up 1 1. Yeah, and definitely burning both your white wild assaults at that point. Those were your lifelines, really, to stay relevant in that one. So a little unfortunate, but that's going to make it 1 to 1. MFCR going to tie up the affair. All right, looking incredibly strong here. I mean, that was a, a blistering first game there from a boy. Uh, MFCR made great adaptations, which is mostly staying outside of Potemkin's effective poking ranges and yes. just waiting for those whiff punishes or preemptively throwing out the 2D. Oh, that's a great throw. Closes the distance, gets to confirm for the hard knockdown here. Uh -oh. Spaces it out so the DP doesn't connect. Oh, God, help me. Giganter in the corner. <laughs> he tackled through the break it, gets the hard knockdown, just goes for the white wall assault, and does it again! Just trying to squeeze out any victory, one more touch is all you need! Yeah, you have some meter as well, maybe you're gonna see the YRC here soon, but instead there's the cross up. Doesn't matter what the life total is, MFCR says, don't tell me the, don't tell me what the odds are. Oh my god, will it blend? The boy's getting blended right now! Look at the meter though. No! He's gotten hit by every single mix-up, even just threw his hands into the air, that is a tragic round to lose. But oh. you can't get tilted. You cannot get tilted no. in this matchup. Rounds are going to go that way. That's, you accepted that as a Potemkin player, especially going into the Leo matchup. I'm trying to go for the JD to sit on him. Not going to quite work. Now forced to block this situation, but there's the run through. A boy is really having a difficult time with the left rights right now from MFCR. Oh, throw is big. Close to the distance. Podbuster connects. Oh, goes for the flip into the corner. We want the wall break. Ooh. Okay, so returning to neutral, a little difficult, but still positive bonus racking up. Oh my god, throws the hammer fall. Yeah, I don't blame a boy for spending that burst. Immediately goes for Gigantor, and there it is. Yeah, able to squeeze in the 6H in between the max damage that you're able to get. That was really smart too, right? We know that MFCR is looking for those 2Ds, so going up and immediately throwing out the super just to catch him off guard. Okay, get up D there, gets the overhead. Still being pushed back to the corner. Trying to utilize the Mega Fist to hop back, but the PRC into the super is going to catch you. Speaking of getting caught, there's the gold burst. Ah, uh, DP connects for the second time. Let's jump away though, back Mega Fist. Definitely a good reversal to be able to get out of sticky situations. Wow. And what a juggle. Look at your health bar too. The amount of damage on that confirm is incredible. Potemkin, such a technical character in stride. Nice, FDs makes the door that's not gonna be able to cross up there. Wild Assault still by some room. Oh, that was White Wild Assault on reversal. Going through the wall, should be enough to kill here with the Pizza Cutter. Absolutely, even with Potemkin's big defense, even he can't survive that. Yeah, the armor and the guts, not quite enough. Two to one, still in this. A manageable situation, but MFCR, Tightening things up a little bit at a time. Great backdash. All right, yeah, gonna get sent through the wall again here with the wild assault. So now you're gonna have to hold this incoming mix up. MCR just gonna stay same side, just wants to keep a boy locked down in the corner. Shut down Potemkin's already you know, difficult movement. Whoa! And is able to block the hammer ball, doesn't get the punish on it. Okay, so blocking out, nice block on the DP as well. Maximize the damage as hard as you can. Try and find a mix up afterwards. Super comes through and it's able to reach. And here we go, another hard knockdown situation here. Boy, with 50 burst available. This is gonna give you deflect shield, but I imagine he'll hold on to it with this life deficit here. Right. Oh, Spencer for the wild assault. Wants to be a little aggressive. Nice jump out on the Garuda there, blocking the slide head. MSCR once again measuring for that 2D. Oh, slide head for the whip punish. Looks for the pop buster, not gonna find it. MFCR 
Putting himself one away. And going into this with full burst as well, meaning he gets that get out of jail free card if he needs it with 2D into the DP Classic. Feels like we're in season one. Oh, off the Clash, they able to go for the FD, very smart. MSCR still gets the better of the situation, though, is going to be able to regain his burst at this point now. 50 meters still available, nice block on the overhead, but the pressure hasn't ended yet. Yeah, you need to find a way out of here, utilizes the armor to get through, there's the Pop Buster! And just like that, it's evened up, but DP's immediately on Wake Up. And things are getting really dangerous right now. Wild Assault keeping the pressure up, there's the Far Slash but immediately gets tossed, and this could be the last mix. Beautiful backdash into the back throw. And he's able to survive for another round. A boy is still in this. And when you're on the verge of defeat, this is where boys become men, Proxy. <laughs> <laughs> nice flick. <laughs> immediately into the DP. Okay, backdash so. there, trying to get some kind of shimmy. Yep, so block and load. FD pretty good, but unfortunately starving yourself out of meter. You have to do it. We're running out of time here. Crossup comes out again, looks for the reversal of some kind, not going to find it. Yeah, and all this meter available too. A boy just locked down in the corner, looking for a way to escape, and there it is! Maya blocks oh. the DP! This could be huge! Yeah, and look yeah. at the meter, spend the super. I love the idea. <laughs> the heat tackle at the end, so good. But here's the knockdown. One final interaction, too far away. He might have wanted Akara, or trying to bait out the DP. It has 50 meter. Has the burst, has the block, the flex shield, buy some room, wire see it Oh fun. my god! A boy with a dude, scientific precision, unbelievable, taking it to the final game. That is quite the comeback. An amazing counterplay. Insane sequence. He knew that even if you deflect shield Leo, Leo could come right back in with the Berserker Slash. So had the YRC on deck, hit the car up Potemkin Buster, and now we're at game five. Especially have, after having seen MFCR react and RC forward in response to the flex shield already once. Here we go, still stuck in the blender. MCR trying to put a stop to a boy's winter side dreams here. Oh, the PRC to throw the white wild assault. That's one way to answer it. Oh, still had time to block even after the armor. And he has just been stuck in this corner, gets the 6P. Mike Giganter just using it as a bit of an Aegis Reflector. Fly right behind you to get the mix up. And then swap sides only for the OTG. Not the biggest reward that he wanted off of it, but now he has MFCR in a space where he could control him, locked in this cage. Oh, Whoa. still gets to throw afterwards, still okay. Gets the 5P, has to burst. And the 2D, oh a taste my. of your own medicine. A boy is one round away from moving on. It's big boy winter, Proxy. Staying heavy, connecting again. Looks for the slide head. Nice, the missile drop kick. Ooh, the overhead coming through. This round isn't looking good, but we've seen a boy make these comebacks before. Okay. 100 meter here for MFCR. Yeah, at this point, save your burst. You can maybe take a risk with the meter there, but not quite worth it. Still back on your feet. The chills, okay. Yeah, you gotta play a really patient game here. Can't take too many risks. But now the meter is gone for MFCR. If any time, you can do it now. Oh, clean. Ooh, jumping right out of the pop buster attempt. MFCR starting to get those adaptations here late into the set. And there it is, the Pussies game. Got him with a 5K and immediately goes for the run through. Just barely scoots on through. Potential for a final. Oh, dude, this is crazy. Gets the trade. Oh, Garuda goes for another one. Look at the chip damage on that OTG with the White Wild Assault. Oh, my God. And the anti air Gagantor. This is huge. Look at the damage. Not quite dead, but that's a hard knockdown. Massive lead here for a boy. Needs to play it patient. Or not. White Wild Assault. And there it the is! DP! With the pop of a boy moving on to winner's finals with the Potemkin! Fist what bumps a only. performance. Fist bumps only. <laughs> wow. Dude, a boy doing it for new head.
You love to see it. Strong stuff coming through. Winner's side, Potemkin continues. Yeah, that's crazy. The dream that's of crazy. our winner's finals big boy winter is still alive. A boy keeps Bro. it there. MFCR, not done yet, obviously. There, a beast from the losers. There is a real possibility, a real chance. Go ahead, please. In some timeline that we could see a Potemkin mirror in grand finals, but that is up to a boy in Turb to make it happen, all I'm right? Gonna freak out. The <laughs> landscape of Strive will change entirely, but there are two other big boys that arguably have an even better matchup against Potemkin that are waiting in the wings, and that is going to be Red I Am Not and Cheerio, the two Gold Lewis maestros who are going to come up to put in that work. And we're going to see one of them coming up next right here absolutely coming into uh what is going to be an incredibly difficult matchup here uh facing off against nitro nitro has already shown uh, a mastery of the matchup here has done very well against gold lewis has actually does have a set over red i'm not on the path actually to get to this spot absolutely so from one gold lewis to another now running that gauntlet is a uh very stressful though, having to deal with all those behemoth typhoons. Yeah, I mean, that's something when I, when we were sitting in the stands and we were watching at Frosty's, Nitro was watching Giovanna's play and he was like, man, these people don't lab. I gotta, I, I wish that, so uh, hopefully we can see some of that lab work come together here for him, but we'll see. You know, Cheerio, tough customer. Uh, Giovanna is a character that, uh, even talking to few, uh, different players on the floor here, uh, I feel like she's, she's kind of slept on. People understand that she's strong and I feel like they've always understood that she was strong. But there's something different about Giovanna now, right? Having really easy access to those guard yeah. crushes. Her strike throw game is phenomenal. She has real mix-up potential. She is a pretty terrifying character to deal with in many different matchups. I absolutely agree. But we'll see how this plays out. This is another one of those situations. It's it's rare that I get this this many times in a tournament, but I just like whoever wins wins. I'm so happy for both <laughs> these players. I'm just happy to see them both on the main stage here. Top eight. Yeah, oh. we have great character variety throughout this. Honestly, when you look at the bracket, too, so incredibly stacked. So great to see these players make it all the way up here. Oh, we got the Jacko sticker? Okay. You've moved on. Yeah. Make set sure to check out aside. the artist alley. <laughs> I mean, nice sticker. <laughs> but set the sticker aside. We've moved on. <laughs> Traded the minions for a dog. Dog boys now. Absolutely. <laughs> There we go, warming up those hands, got to get those buttons checked, and then we can hop right into this. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Of, oh, oh, I see the, I see a mobile camera we got to set up. I don't know if we're going to go to it yet. No, so, uh, I mean, just from the perspective of Gold Lewis, how do you feel about this? Like, what, Gold what's Lewis? The, so from it, the Gold Lewis perspective. From the Gold Lewis perspective? Uh, oh, to, Wooper. Yeah, Wooper, that's what I was saying. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it on the setup cam here. Let's go, Wooper! <laughs> I mean, top eight's pretty cool, but that's that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, but from the Gold Lewis perspective, I feel like Giovanna is pretty difficult to deal with just because of how much she can yeah. rush you down and play that strike throw game. I agree. If you whiff anything, she's going to be in with that uh, that dashing Man, far I slash dashing 2S. And 2P is going to be like your best friend. 2P and White Wild Assault are going to be the options to really stuff her because you have to stuff the spiral arrow or else she is just going to keep looping pressure on you over and over and over. I mean, we, we, we would be amiss to not mention the best reversal in the game, Gold Lewis 2P. You're right, so. you're right. <laughs> we'll see. White Wall Assault, like you said, definitely going to be a factor as well. As well as that kind of in and out game. Dash up 5K a lot of the time. He's going to be the name of the game for Giovanna as well. Let's see right here around start. Nitro immediately dashing forward with the big boot on the heavy slash. Pineapple comes through, walks all the way to the wall, has to burst just to maybe just get out of the corner. Definitely a good decision. Yeah, for sure. And here we go, rushing on in. Car Behemoth for the overhead. Now we have Nitro right where we want him into the corner. And about to be sent right through. Too far away? Oh, oh yep. Yeah. Just a little too far away, but still able to get the air throw off the tech. And there it is. Big Melia coming through with a JH. Yeah, had this high security as well. So potentially if we return the neutral there, the pineapple, the drone, still able to come out there to control the neutral. Oh my god, but there we go. Stepping on the toes of the 5k. 5k is going to be that good preemptive button as well in neutral because it does have a bit of a disjointed hitbox. Okay, back dashing on the first spiral arrow though. Definitely making mental note. We get the back throw. This is huge. Oh, the deflect shield still forced to block the Behemoth Typhoon, and now you're actually going to be dead. This time it's down with the system for real. Yeah, just on the guaranteed damage on the Shatter. Very strong showing. All right, it's really part of that was just shutting down a lot of Giovanna's mobility, right? We set up the drone to prevent her from dashing in on you. If she had, wants to come in, she's going to have to go through the air, and then utilizing 5K as a preemptive poke. Here we 
go. Drone is out again. <laughs> Look how much real estate it buys you. <laughs> yeah, because Nitro doesn't win Interact. Knows that dashing in over Drone is a fool's errand, right? Uh, 6P, so active though. Gets that empowered spiral arrow. Gets the stick to the wall. The spinning dog kick. Not gonna white enough to kill here, but the hard knockdown and the life lead is pretty big. Just goes for the double dash into the close slash. Cheerio blocking for his life now. Yeah, not looking for anything too tricky there. Gets the just block, and that leaves you at the perfect range to sneak in that though. The perfect for Nitro. Great answer. A round start now. Cheerio backing up just a little bit, giving a little room. Doesn't get hit by that early counter hit. 2K into Behemoth Typhoon. Oh no. This one could have hurt if he had the meter. Oh, I mean, what do you mean could have hurt? Look at the life bar. Jobber, bro. Oh my god. Let me tell you, it can always be worse, all right? <laughs> a fourth of that was Chip. Gets the stomp again. Oh, the toes need to be protected. What a stop. Cheerio answers with a perfect. Good god. Again, this is going to be a part where Nitro needs to put a stop to Cheerio's momentum. You cannot allow him to get that 2-0 lead. 5K, got to watch up those lows. Just looping lows into overheads. Poking at the tip there of Bar Slash. This is where Giovanna's lack of a reversal really comes into play, right? She doesn't have that traditional DP, so can't really just escape for free. Okay. Offense definitely on the other side here. I really like the use of the Wild Assault there. Steals a plus frame, but again, backdashing to throw a tail is all the time. Nice deflect shield. Oh, flips to the other side though. Again with the 2S, got hit by the tail and the final hit of it. But the JD coming out clutch. There's the RC. Cheerio goes up 2 0. There's also a timeline where we might have a Gold Lewis Mirror Grand Finals, all right? <laughs> Dual one. Either our way, we all win. Our biases are clear. <laughs> Still, just lean on the stop sign here. Great whip punish, though. The timing's starting to switch up a little bit here for Nitro. Definitely like to see it. Yeah, I like it. Using a lot more of those enhanced specials are going to be really important in this matchup. You got to give Gold Lewis a taste of his own medicine with the guard crushes. The back dashes with the white wild assault coming through. And now you're in the corner once again. FD just to kind of negate some of this chip. Yeah, if you didn't burst there, that there's was a good chance part. you were dead. Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay, Sparlo just barely connects from that distance. Dashes up, fakes the throw. Nitro does not fight. Here's the reversal. Oh, but the PRC. Nice backdash there, avoiding the 2K. Brown ass kick, a little bit of delay on that, is able to catch. Cheerio put him into the corner. So a good amount of burst here. Might actually be able to build a full burst, but instead it's going to be the White Wild Assault. Nice air tech from both players. Kind of resets things a little bit with the 2P. Oh, but you got to watch out. That danger penalty coming through. It is going to make your tension pulse slow down a little bit. So less meter game here for Nitro, but still able to close out the round so it doesn't matter. It doesn't devolve this ass whooping. <laughs> Dash a 5k, a couple 5 Ps in a row. Now look for that high low, but the IBFD, good timing on the defense there. And dashes up to take his turn back. Oh, and the burst there on the enhanced spiral arrow. Didn't want to get caught in the guard crush. 6p. Risky situation. Remember, if you hit gold with the drone goes away. So the risk reward there, paying off for Nitro. Wow, what a fade, just barely missed based on the DP there. Dashes up and looks for the instant overhead, but we're able to dash away. 5K, too active, gets the punish. We still have 100 meter though here for Nitro. Has a lot of different options, goes for the YRC, but it's gonna get punished. And now, no, we dropped the confirm there. If that 5H would've connected, we would've been able to get the kill. The fuzzy is gonna connect. Nitro in the driver's seat, can we close it out? Oh, oh no. no, pushes forward with the stop sign here into the skyfish. It's not quite enough. But even one touch will do it, and there it is. Run up 2P. Give him the elbow. Yeah, at that point, you're not trying to commit to a behemoth. Anything will do. Set point potentially here. You see you letting that JK the jump in and the 2K to stuff the dash forward. Okay, tell me how you feel. <laughs> Twice with it? Yeah, and utilizing that 6H, recognizing that, you know, if we go for FD or if we go for the defunct shield, I want to keep you blocking, and that should be it right there. Down with the system, putting Geo in the coffin. Wow, so Cheerio, three games straight, headed into winner's finals. <laughs>
Potemkin vs. Cold Lewis Winners <laughs> Finals is what we're going to have set. But before we get to that, we have to start heading into the loser's bracket. But a good showing from both players coming out for sure. I mean, Cheerio, I just... I feel like overall just dominance. I feel like it's something that feels very obvious to talk about when you think about it with Gold Lewis, but mileage per hit always a factor in that spot. And it just felt like Cheerio was getting the better of those in uh, those kind of initiated trades almost all the time. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he was doing a really good job dealing with a lot of Giovanna's pressure. And in certain situations, too, where Giovanna wants to put you in the corner and kind of run a similar game plan to Gold Boost, where it's constantly guard crushing you, right? Looping between guard crush, enhanced power arrow, and the throw game, strike throw. But we were preemptively going for yeah. uh, RCs. We were going for bursts, anything to prevent getting us in that situation yeah. so we could play the footsies game. How many full, clean, completed combos did you see from Nitro? Yeah, exactly. It's just a, a, a burst was managed really well, was just always available for it. Definitely strong stuff to show. But while we do that, you know, we got our next players getting ready to go. Ooh, all right. So we're going to get some more Gold Lewis action coming up with Red. Yes. I am not. So we're facing off against, I do believe that's going to be Scambolini, Scambolini on the other side. Yeah, absolutely. The young Kai, Scambolini coming through. So Kai making it in the top eight of Kubu, too. And, you know, Kai doesn't need any kind of a extra bells and whistles. We all know how good he is. The fact that he had to get nerfed just a little bit going into this patch, right? But we'll see how this plays out here. Kai, of course, with a strong footsies game as yes. well. Being able to utilize that fireball game to kind of zone Gold Lewis out a little bit, prevent him from rushing into those danger zones. But, you know... White Wild Assault is a great equalizer, and if there's any Gold Lewis has been synonymous with White Wild Assault, it is Red I Am Not. Nice cosplay, by the way. That is nice actually cosplay. really nice. <laughs> Shout outs. If you know, you know. There's uh, maybe spoilers, depending on where you are. We can't talk <laughs> We can't talk about the manga. There's too many anime only watching. There's too many right? anime only watching. <laughs> nice cosplay, though. Let's just say, you know, a couple months ago, this, this guy had some pretty good chapters. <laughs> well, let's see it. I believe we're just going to be getting a button check here because I do see the Mr. Bad Guy selected here. And I'm oh, expecting yeah. to see our boy Kyle, Mr. Kai Kisuke. Kyle Kisuke. Coming through. It's Kyle when he's, got the, uh, when he's got the denim jacket on, all right? There you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got the lifted pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're checking the Bluetooth devices too. Good, good. Genius. Listen, I had this happen to me in my pools, and it was my fault. That's right. Desync your controllers. That's right. Desync controllers, everyone at home. <laughs> Oh, man. But like I said, just a little button check before we get into it here. Uh, I feel like I definitely like Kai in this one a lot. I think the fireball, like you said, the fireball, the control, uh, the way the his buttons kind of just function in neutral overall works out well. He's got a great DP that's very, very good for not only stopping these uh, weird jump-in timings and early aggression uh, angles from Gold Lewis, but also just purely as a reversal. Plus, I mean, you can't discount just the strengths of him without even the matchup. Just uh, RTL for the corner carry, great damage, great mix-up. I just want to point out that he flicked him off there right at the end. He hit him with the, the soul bad guy. That's how you feel about this that. scam? I respect that. <laughs> but you are absolutely correct. Kai is the king of neutral for a reason, right? The most honest character in fighting games. I'm some would say, some would say. Not me, but some, some would say. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> Versus Gold Lewis here with the dishonest white wall assault. Hey, but the fist pump is on. Looks like we're ready to go. So Gold Lewis and Kai once again. And this is going to be the loser side of the bracket. So unfortunately, one of these great players is going to be eliminated and sent home. But let's see, round start's going to be really interesting. It's always scary to challenge Gold Lewis round star, right? It really is. Just the threat of the amount of damage he can put out. And of course, Scambly is going to be a little patient, but does get hit by the JD. I mean, that's just the general fear against Gold Lewis. Being wrong, you're so much more wrong against Gold Lewis than you are against other characters. It hurts. It really hurts. You feel the, the weight of your sins on every bad button, for sure. Man, you Look that! Good, wow, yeah, you can't... Stun Edge is decent in this matchup, but heavy Stun Edge Agreed. in neutral is going to be the real tricky one, right? Being able to find the room to throw that out. It has so much startup that those Behemoth Typhoons are just going to swing right through it. Yeah, I definitely would stick more to S and more to uh, TK Fireball as well. Yes. can be good, but... The bait on the burst, look at the damage, look at the knockdown all the way to the corner, keeps the pressure but doesn't get the dash, doesn't matter though, oh. that is a kill, a clean kill from Red Eye of Dot. Yeah, brutal, Scambly didn't get to really establish any kind of game plan or offense there. The rhythm is all in Red Eye of Not's favor at the moment. And it's all about finding that rhythm, especially in these high stakes matchups. Go to the double white wall, so yeah. 
One big thing for Scam Lane 2, you're gonna have to lean on that DP a little bit more than maybe you're comfortable with, because DP is, is a great equalizer against Gold Lewis pressure. 100% agree. Deflect shield, good timing on that one. I love that though, using the fireball to nullify things, slow things down, but the jump in. Again, some big Milia action. Oh my god, we're swinging here. Alright, close slash coming through. Yeah, trying to jump out of the plus frames there. Dash is up again with the far slash. Not gonna work out. Deflect shield to get some room, but it holds dash macro straight afterwards. Yeah, but all this damage is still adding up, even with the chip, and there it is. White Wall Assault tries to go for the Skyfish. It's not gonna work. Scambolini, this is your opportunity. Don't let it slip. Yeah, maximize the damage and get the hard knockdown. Very smart. Two interactions depending on how we go. Just Ooh. gets the throw. Thanks and for your soul. The That's the closest we'll get to stealing someone's soul in this game, but you know what? It's still just as good. We'll take it. All right, but now let's see if Scamily can bring things back. There's the DP. IDP, pretty decent. Just sends him straight up. And the wow. run of 2H blowing up the drone. Startup, Sacred Edge to break the wall. In the same way that Kai needs to be careful with heavy fireball, drone at particular angles like that is not going to work out. Yeah, you definitely want to either have full screen advantage. Oh my god! PRC backwards into the 5k to stomp the stun dipper. <laughs> that was such a great answer there from Red. And now just harassing Scambolini. Ride the lightning, we still have 50 meter available. Dashing on in, trying to bait out some kind of throw or a response. Does it for much, gets the anti-air to stop the flip kick. Really the first time we've seen it as an attempt at a turn steal, it immediately gets destroyed. All right, the 2D mortal counter there, round star. We're gonna be able to break the wall for that one. Ooh, no, and we go for the far slash so we can get more pressure on the wall. I like that decision making a lot. Don't go back to neutral against Goldless. The infinite? Throw again. It would have worked. Absolutely would have worked, but so does the JH. Massive round there for Scambolini with the perfect. Time things up 1 1. You see the exhale. Gotta keep yourself level. Oh, dude. Both of them so focused here. I mean, you have to be. This is the loser side of the bracket. Yeah, no room for errors, especially tough. Starting it out early in the day after playing so long yesterday, having the entire bracket to have to kind of just break your way through. Gets the anti-air 2P though, closing that distance, having used all of the burst already. Scamley spends some of their own, but it doesn't find much. Counter hit there from Red Eye Knock. Gets the cross up and the knockdown. Yep, sets out the drone too, just a little bit more pressure. Look at the hit on that 2P. Bro, even when you block the low, if you're not holding FD, look at the damage! Help! <laughs> look at the risk gauge, too. It's plus. Doesn't get much for it. Back to neutral. Tries to go for the drone. Nice with the flip kick. Oh, yeah. Then resetting into the throw. OTG, heavy stun edge right in your face. Back into the infinite. Whoa! <laughs> that sent him so far away with that deflect shield. Avoiding the drone altogether. Now just trying to pepper with these air fireballs. Nice, I love that, especially because of the amount of meter you have. You know you're gonna have the time to build steel turn. RTL should hit, there it is. And Scambly is able to take away the round. Beautiful conversions that we're seeing. High level guilty gear is something special. And there we go, far slash at round start. With the air confirm, break the wall this time. Yeah, incredibly strong start to the round here. Third of the life off the table, red. Tries to get aggressive right afterwards. Try to steal that momentum back. The DP comes through. IBFD does not get you the room you were looking for. Wild Assault completely counters. And those DP combos there off the shock state are something to see. Now just trying to slow things down a little bit here. You don't need to get too aggressive and overextend. But there it is. PRC into the counter hit. Close slash. Scambolini going up with another perfect. Yeah, anti air close slash turns to the crowd and says, One more, one, one more, one more. more. Definitely like that energy. And again, losers bracket. So, no room for error. Back to the character select, a little yep. bit of a slowdown. I like that, I like that. Take some time to breathe, you know, regroup, think about what went wrong, and formulate a new game plan. It also helps, you know, once your opponent has that little bit of a pop-off, you go back to cool them down a little bit, right? We thought about Nagoryuki right there. Thought about it, hmm, interesting. I think we're probably, yeah, we're gonna keep it locked in with the Gold Lewis, I imagine. 
Right. All Jeez. right. It's locked in now. This is it. There's no more swapping characters here for Red. Has to ride Gold Lewis all the way to defeat or victory. I mean, if this is the character you rode all the way into the top eight, definitely I'm a huge proponent of pick your stuff. Uh, especially if you're not a player that normally is going for an aggressive counterpicking style. You need to stick to your guns, stick to what you know. It's what's going to get you through these tough times. Absolutely. Duel one. Let's Here we go, round start situation. Both players being a little cautious. First blood is gonna go to Red Eye am not. Double white wild assault again. Push you all the way to the corner, exactly where you want them. Just trying to snowball the round immediately. An opportunity for a whip punish Whoa. there. Wow, it, it was so tight. <laughs> they couldn't even get the actual full punish. Oh, but the back dash there, recovery on it is going to get caught by that far slash. Squeezing out a ton of damage and the white, I was going to say white wall assault, the regular wall assault, red one. <laughs> that should be the round here, yeah, with that shock state DP. Scambolini sitting on set point. Yeah, high potential here. Oh, but Red obviously having that full burst, and we've seen how aggressive they like to be with the White Wild Assault. Same side, Makara goes to the Whoa. Wild Assault, gets the Clash. Red gets the better of the Clash by a oh mile. Oh, God. Jesus. Just murdered him. <laughs> that was a crazy interaction there, being able to convert off of that Clash in the DP. And now Red Eye am not starting to build up some momentum here. Oh, throws the wild assault. That's no, huge. Oh, the incident. Into the corner, harassing with the lows. There's the RC. You don't want to lose your turn. Yeah, and used, in used like half a bar of meter just for FD. Finally does escape, but gets the trade. Here we go. Opportunity. Beautiful back dash. Set up the drone again. Absolutely. But we set up a little late, allowing Scamoli to get a jump, but that's not going to save him here. Oh, just pressing on the 2P. Chip damage is going to do it with the coffin. And now we are going to game five. Extremely back and forth between the two, but, you know, I feel a pop-off brewing maybe. But who knows? I don't want to. It's always it's always the, the quiet ones, right? <laughs> two to two. Losers side. A lot to lose on this one. Double white wild assault not going to work at all this time. Scambolini. Let me show you the better white. Let me show you the better wild assault. Connects with both a third of life off the table. Gets the positive bonus. Finds the connection again. He's able to walk to the wall. Max meter. That's going to be an RTL. No sacred edge. I like this too. Yeah, sacred edge is great because it allows you to get a little bit more damage and get that shock state on deck, which leads to even bigger combos. And there it is. Sacred edge again. Scambolini once more at set point. Red still looking cool, something collected, finds a knockdown. Feels like whoever gets the first hit wins the round. It's just been trading perfects back and forth. Gets the pick up there off the drone, very nice. Overhead's gonna connect. There's no way it's another perfect, right, Proxy? Oh, uh, maybe. TP gets out of trouble. And the trade. Hey, no perfect, no pressure. Hey, that counts. <laughs> <laughs> final game, final round to send us here. Top eight losers gets the poke, has to go for the burst. That's been crucial. That double white wild assault has been how red has been snowballing so many of these rounds. And after having spent it already now, Scambolini a huge lead. Yeah, gonna be able to break the wall with this as well. It has the meter for the sacred edge. And again, first hit. It feels like whoever gets the first hit takes the round. Proxy, let's see if Red M not can prove that wrong, but throws the white wild assault. Oh, that might be the final nail on the coffin here. YRC is blocked! Scambolini goes through and is able to get the punish. Great block and great throw on the white wild assault. You have to be brave against Gold Lewis. And Scambolini showing you the perfect way to show that bravery. Yeah, and there's the pop up as well. You called it. Great performance there from Scambolini. I mean, super well deserved. Oh, God, oh that, that, I, ouch. that's dirty, bro. Ouch. <laughs> it's okay. Nobody saw it. <laughs> But great performance from Red Eye Am Not 2, fighting valiantly, putting on an incredible show throughout the entire weekend. You know, one of the strongest Gold Lewises in all of North America. Absolutely. Definitely always showing up, always doing incredibly well, especially here in these Florida brackets, which is so much fun to get to see. But that is Scambolini earning their right even farther into the bracket as we continue to progress, continue to move forward, get closer and closer to crowning our champion. TNS9 Guilty Gear Strive is continuing here.
And let's take a look at this bracket so we can get to see the full picture of All what right. we've got here. Yeah, so of course on the winner's side there, we did have MFCR versus a boy. A boy moving on to winner's finals. Big boy winter winner's finals here with the Gold Lewis versus the Potemkin from Nitro versus Cheerio. Cheerio, of course, going up in a dominating 3-0 matchup. Oh, loser side. Still looking interesting here, like you said, MFCR down here with Scambolini. Nitro waiting on the winner of Turb. A new breaker. New, that's new breaker 9,000. Excuse right. me. Let me. That's the 9,000. I'll put some respect on his name. <laughs> but Turb coming through, of course, the next Potemkin. See, I'm trying to manifest it. I'm trying to manifest Potemkin Grand Finals. I don't I care how biased it. that sounds. I, I need that it. to happen. Right, I, I need that to be this. in the history books. Listen, that would be a very TNS thing to have happen. You know, one of our first Guilty Gear Strive online tournaments did have a Potemkin mirror in the Grand Finals uh, in uh, Jan versus Not Enough Damage. Shouts to the that's homies. That's true, that's true. And we'd had that very, very early on. So, you know, as, as we begin, so we end potentially. <laughs> but, you know, let's not, uh, let's not count our chickens too early. Still a lot of Guilty Gear to be played here. Yeah. This is still loser side as well. Turb needs to win a multitude of matches to be able to make it anywhere near that side. Loser side, and uh, it's going to be rough too. Uh, Jacko is not, <laughs> this not, is not, not what the champion wants to do. This is not with. super fun. Definitely. I mean, you do have armor. You do have slide head, which is very effective in this matchup as well. But, uh, I mean, Jacko, as you know, Offense incarnate once we're able to get that momentum, once those minions get started up. And the, uh, Potemkin, not exactly known for his defensive capabilities. No, not really, <laughs> so. not really. But there we go, 6P immediately on the first minion. This is exactly what Newbreaker's gonna do. Just try and sit back, set up the minions to then start running some offense, right? Turb is gonna be the one who has to answer. Like you mentioned, slide hit is a good way to do it. Here we go, it's just going to be smothered in offense. Setting on the mask, making sure that we keep our homies protected. And look at that fear gauge. Oh, there it is. no, and the dust is the one to do it. And look at the life bar. That's Potemkin, by the way. Bro, oh my god. But there we go, we don't get the wall break. It's dead. Turb is able to tech off and now has Newbreaker in the corner right where he wants him. But no, one bad jump puts himself right back into harm's way. Yeah, let's just fly right out of there. Spend the 50 meter, don't yeah. blame you. HPV to get you some room is definitely good. But the potential to turn this around, the Pop Buster connects. Look at the life total here, 6K to close some of the distance, but we get that clean answer right away from New Record. Oh, immediately oh. sends out. Oh, that should be it, RC. And there we go. Wow. What a way to turn around. No wasted opportunities. That's what you have to do in this matchup. It was so smart to get that one extra hit before going for the Heat Knuckle to make sure you got the kill. <laughs> He's just trying to swipe him out of the sky. You see that? The heat knuckle. Oh, multi hitting normal though. Really, really good for just naturally breaking that armor. Great throw tech there. Slide head coming through. Doesn't go for a jump over. Instead, just sends out the Garuda there. Immediately into the 6K. What that fast RC is so scary. But if you have a beautiful back dash there from New Breaker. Okay, a little bit of damage there on the jump S. Doesn't get too much L, pressure's on. Still has an RC available, plenty of minion gauge as well. Let's see, we got 50 meter. Oh, but we're not gonna go for it yet. There's the Elysium driver. Not gonna kill, but of course, going to get that hard knockdown and positive bonus. Oh, never mind, we are gonna kill. Yeah, absolutely, the RC, just to make sure it hadn't stuck to the wall yet. Great decision making there. Great utilization of the meter. Trying to put that white wall assault there around, start to get some kind of offense going. Not gonna work though. Back to the familiar position. You don't want to go with these trades. Oh, but let's see. Yep, no one cared who I was until I put on the mask, keeping the pressure going. Oh my god, and again, look at the chip, look at the meter. Oh, oh my what? god, look at the pop buster. Bro, pop players are so nasty. Ah! Your soul is mine. <laughs> Oh my god, and that's how quick the rounds can turn around. <laughs> that was 25 seconds of Jacko mauling Potemkin, and he said, nah, son, relax. Hold on. <laughs> Both of them all smiled and laughing. Like, 25 <laughs> seconds of Jacko mauling him. <laughs> yep, you ha even getting hit by that, you'd be like, all right, that's pretty <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't see it on reversal like that. This is not like a, tr like a Street Fighter type of game where you can kind no. of just turn as big. It is a motion that needs to be very concise. Yeah, yeah, the class, I mean, that was really a big thing in Exert, right? Backdash yeah. into a Pop Buster, finding any kind of free frame gap to put out Pop Buster as a reversal. But it doesn't happen as often here in Strive. Here we go, pressure is on still. 
It feels relentless. The Turb has found ways to thread the needle here and does it once again. Oh, we are projecting the jump out. Huge call out. Crowd would have popped for that one. Well, well, this all doesn't quite get there. Newbreaker has done an amazing job. I was going to say, I'm spacing away around the White Wild Assault here, but the air throw. Oh, cross up on the other side. Ooh, good for the Hammerfall forward to avoid the attack command from behind and the minion. Great job closing the gap. Oh, no RC though from Newbreaker. Pet Dust is blocked. Slowly building meter. Deflect shield to get some room. Tries to go for the Hammerfall. Close slash. Oh, we a little swinging. too far. Oh, Whoa! it slides on in. I go, you stay. <laughs> it's the right color, too. Oh my god. Six B definitely a great minion stopping tool. Okay, but counterplay already with the shield. I'm trying to slide head right underneath. And this is how most rounds are going to look in this matchup here. Turf's always going to be on the back foot, having to answer New Breaker's offense. Elysium driver for the wall break this time. But still, 50 meter on Turb's side. How are we going to use it? Oh, maybe that triple overhead was going to come through, but just going to go for the two. Gets the stick to the wall again, and the double Elysium driver said, you got two pop busters? Let me show you something. <laughs> the Jackal Buster? <laughs> True, actually. <laughs> only cost 50 meter. Here we go, one apiece now. Turb still looking good in this. Definitely studied in the matchup. And I mean, as a Tenkin player, you really desperately have to learn all these matchups and perform at a high level like this. Oh, yeah, just doing that game for sure. There's the counter hit. Still stuck to the wall. Here comes the Elysium Driver once again. Locked out of the burst. Turb, two white wild assaults, maybe at the flex shield. Still has burst. There's a lot of opportunity here for comeback. Oh, got the just block there with the IBFD. But still not quite a big enough push out. Oh, there we go. Hands on. Pro <laughs> Look at your life bar. Look at your life bar. But still, look at the meter okay. here on New Breaker's side. 100 meter available. Are we going to RC the super? That's what I like the most so Don't far. That's the thing I like the most so far about New Breaker's play is that there's no, there's no panic. Yeah, Even in these situations where that boss buster comes through, uh, that entire, your whole life bar gets depleted, and you're still calm, in control, makes a really good calculated decision. But unfortunately, in this round, we're gonna have to say goodbye to that, you know, 75% life once again. Well, it's a big thing. You're a grappler player. I play grapplers in some games. That's what grapplers feed on. They want you to be scared. They want you to get tilted. When you're thinking about it, I've won. Exactly. <laughs> and that's exactly what Turb <laughs> says there with the perfect answering back. Right, round start situation. Oh, okay. Well, it's all way too far. Gets a knockdown with the slide head. Nice press, though. Yeah, waking up with 2K. So risky. All right, there's the RC. Keep the pressure up. Get that free minion set. Slide head comes through. I love that we're going for the guard command there whenever he tries to 6P the minions. Back wave is definitely another really nice way to build. Clear those out. All 5D connects. No pick up afterwards, though. Turb sitting with a lot of meter, but we're not going to get the chance to spend it here. That is another game for New Breaker coming out on top. Nah, it's just been completely in control, not leaving those gaps. No room for Turb to try and blow through these opportunities. I still all smiles from both, though. I yeah, like this. I'm I happy. It. This I is great. It. We're just having. We're just playing Guilty Gear. It's not that serious. The Guilty Gear is a fun game. Here we go, jump in for the knockdown, set the minion behind you. Between a rock and a hard place. Oh, good jump back. A little too far for the 2K though. Let's poke the minion, but a better whip punish there, recognizing that the minion was gonna get attacked at that point. A lot of times you can induce your opponents to swing in inopportune moments like that. And now with the buff, we're gonna go all in here, drains all of the meter. Oh, but wow, we're still able to weather the storm and score a hit. Escapes out of the corner, gets the 6H. A white wall assault connects. Oh no, the meaty Garudas. There it is, Pop Buster, but didn't believe that Pop Buster would have been enough to kill. It definitely would have been still alive though. Looks for the 6K, back Mega Fist for the whiff punish. Turb still staying alive here, trying to take this to another game five. 
There we go. Free minion set up. White Wild Assault, I mean, not White Wild Assault, but Wild Assault gives Jackal even more opportunities there to spend resources to get free minion set up. Makes her offense even more potent. How's that again from Noob Record? Just being able to go for the back dash. Pretty strong stuff. Keeping the pressure going. Gonna go for the buff right away. Full attack command. Gets the dust. The mix continues. Yeah, brutal. Able to score the throw. Now we got two minions out. And there's the counter hit. That's gonna be the round. And now set point here for New Breaker. Trying to eliminate Turb from the bracket. Full trade, got the counter hit. First things first though, you gotta find a way to get out of this corner. Damage is already high. There's the fully charged dust. You're dead. Oh you're my so god! Dead. You're so dead off of that. <laughs> I was holding my breath. No, you're I was so dead. <laughs> Charge dust, not something you see as often from Potemkin, but boy, when it hits. <laughs> Had it perfect. He was off screen, too. Oh, tried to go for it another time. Trying to be a funny guy, huh? And there's the burst. Burst spent from both players. The new breaker still has that 50 meter available. Stuck in the corner. There's the PRC trying to sit on her. Yeah, JD not gonna work. Still fine though. Oh, block for your <laughs> life, dude. You just have to survive. Look for the gap. Gets it back. Mega Fist and that buys you a little bit of room. That's all you need though. Dude, the pressure from new breaker is ridiculous though. Oh. Dashes up with the dust. Yep, right there into the Elysium driver. Nice chunk of damage. But we've seen it. Doesn't matter how high the life lead is, Potemkin can even it up in a second. And now we're back to neutral. No hard knockdown here for New Breaker. There's the White Wild Assault, and this is where the train can get started, Proxy. Oh no, to the corner. <gasps> RC up. It does have RC out. Oh, it doesn't matter. Scooped you out of the skies, and that's going to be the round. Oh, the punish comes through. And this is potentially the final round here. See, yep, again, we've seen the round start the exact same way this entire set. Newbreaker backs up, sends out the minions. Turb is forced to push his way in. Okay, good block, the flex shield, buy some room. Assault the action continues, goes for the Wild Assault, taps the dust for the second time. Has not really been going for that very often, but now in the final, the set has been landing it over and over again, breaks the wall, but still alive. Now we're 50 meter available, spends the white wall assault, catches the back dash, pushing to the corner. You gotta watch out for that Elysium driver. We saw it last time, but there we go. A back dash on the pop buster attempt, and New Breaker is gonna do it. Yeah, definitely risked it all on that one, and you gotta respect it, but not quite able to find it. But obviously, <laughs> give it up for Turby. What a great showing here. Top eight is a fantastic placement, dude. That is crazy to get to see. Not one, but two making it through in Turb, showing, you know, with a little hardware, a little elbow grease, you can make it work. Yeah, I mean, love or hate Potemkin, he has some of the most entertaining he's matches so in high level strides. So a, fun to he's watch. He's such a funny guy. He's so good, so good, so good. But that is Jacko moving on forward. New Wrecker gonna continue through this bracket and, and keep wrecking noobs, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, absolutely. New Wrecker looking really good here. I, I love seeing Jacko in top eight as well. A character that, you know, after the recent uh, changes to some other characters, has kind of yeah. dropped off. People have, uh, you know, moved on from the character. Of course. of course, you've seen the likes of Adventure move on to Anji, right? Nitro on Geo. Yeah, Same exactly. Thing. So with that said, we've taken another look at the bracket here. Of course, it has been incredible so far. A lot of exciting Radio matches. Right. But as you can see, in our winner's finals, we do have a boy in Cheerio. Down in the loser side of things, though, Nitro versus Newbrecker and MFCR versus Scambellini. And we are going to head to the losers now. It is going to be MFCR versus Scambellini leading us off as we get back into our Strive action here. And, and this is a... This is a Juicy Monthly there classic. You go. I was about to Let say me it. tell you there. Shouts to Juicy Monthly and Duelist as well. These two play each other all the time so we're gonna see you know it's not much about the character matchup it's more about the player matchup is what we're gonna see here plus I think even in the character matchup I think this matchup is completely doable from both sides I yeah, think they both have really strong tools I think obviously very different game plans but they can work really well against each other we'll see how it turns out between the two MFCR versus Scambellini going to be our next match coming through Absolutely. Just like you mentioned, both characters kind of similar in a lot of the different tool sets that they have. Of course, Leo leans heavily more into the rushdown side of things, where Kai is a little bit more neutral base, trying to score that hit, and then harassing you with that close slash pressure, the strike throw pressure that he is so good at. Oh, are they picking their music? 
you know that you know they argue about the music here. <laughs> They're waiting on us, brother. Oh, waiting on us. See, he's looking for the thumbs up. He's like, please tell me, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> Bro, after his pop off before, he wants to go. He is ready. But Leo Wife and Kai Kisie, obviously the expected matchup here. Pretty good character diversity across the tournament as well. I mean, like we said, it definitely is a white wild assault winter. For sure. <laughs> in the, uh, Been dreaming in the, of a in the white wild eight. assault Christmas, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, yeah, across the entire tournament, it was nice to walk around, see everybody playing. Uh, it just feels good to be here at TNS, man. I just want to say huge shouts again to everybody who supports, uh, everybody who is involved, whether you play in the online tournaments, whether you're here in the venue, or you're just watching online. We appreciate every single person that's involved, man. It's crazy to see. Uh, I don't know, this nice little thing that we've built, and it's all thanks to you guys, so thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are the ones that make this happen. And now we're going to see if we have to send another player home. So unfortunate. I wish and they all could win. I'm a fan of, of all favorites. of these guys. Yeah, I was going to say, these are definitely the homies. <laughs> all right. Like you said, the Orlando Classic. MFCR and Scambolini facing off here, kicking us off the next part of Loser's Bracket. A guaranteed top four spot on the line here. Going to let the intros rock as well. It's king versus king. But there can only be one proxy. Damn, that's crazy. Damn. <laughs> Get out and do something. Your people need you. <laughs> All right, off the start. Goes for the dash up throw right away. Close to the distance, and I could have swore that was a cross. That's unbelievable, dude. That's yeah. visually so tricky. Fates the burst right away. Allows him to actually tech off the wall here. So there we go, DP answering back. <laughs> back and forth with the DPs. MSCR not going to make the mistake this time of not breaking the wall. There it is. No hard knockdown though, so back to neutral. Scambolini not afraid, immediately rushing right on in with that 2P, but gets thrown back into the corner and straight into the next round. I especially like that from Scambolini because he recognized the backdash was coming out. He knew that tendency uh, from MFCR. Obviously, Leo does have a very good backdash, but there we go. The guard point uses the wild assault to actually get the full confirm up of it. Spins the entire burst for a hard knockdown. How can we make this pay off? Yeah, I mean, you're gonna get about, about half of that back at least. So it's a pretty decent investment here. But now, Scambolini sending you through the wall with the Ride the Lightning. Perspectable damage on that too for a low damage super. The scaling was nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we said it before, we'll say it a million times, 100 meter, you know he's gonna do it. You saw him lift up for the RC too. He was in the RC startup when MFCR went for the super reversal. Scambolini though sitting on 100 meter himself. Let's see how he spends it. PRC forward, blocks the DP, but too far away to get the punish. I love the second DP as well. Why not? If they're gonna miss the punish, you might as well do it again. Here's that big juggle. Plenty of meter. Oh, but doesn't break the wall. I like that. Don't go back to neutral when he has that much meter available. You gotta keep him caged. Close slash into the burst. Chucks the fireball, dashes up, but the jump H. Oh, great defense here. Even the just block on the run through. But still, you have to find that last hit. Able to block the low into the overhead. Run through again, then to the slide, Scambolini. Incredible defense. Defense wins championships. Amazing blocks, and you know, the golf clap from the crowd, definitely. <laughs> well, some good defense here, but 6P. MFCR says defense be damned, it's time for the mix. Hey, what is it? The best defense is a good offense, right? If you don't have to block, it doesn't matter. Every matchup is the same when the character's laying on their back, <laughs> John. <laughs> oh, just runs straight into the charge, heavy stunnage. Still able to block, though. Oh, PRC from both players that commits to the backdash afterwards. A little risky, but does get away. Gets the jump in. Nice confirm. Yeah, was able to land in time to get that close slash there. Hit that really late JH. And just like that, things are evened up once again. 5D. Let's see. Yeah, the burst comes out immediately. Scamlini was trying to look for that wall break beforehand. But now 100 meter. Gets caught in the backdash. And that's going to be the round in game number one here for MFCR. Yep, solidly able to close that one away. And not happy, even with the win. I said, I should have won harder. <laughs> <laughs> I love when people are mad about winning. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you feel like a lot of different actions should have gone your way, way right? Way. That you let things slip by. So even when you come out on top, you still feel disappointed. Here we go now, things slowing down just a little bit. That trait, I really like that adjustment there from Scamlini. Before we went for the heavy stun edge, MXCR dashed into it and blocked it. This time we went for the Fuzray arc, right? 
Okay, 5K. Okay. The Dire Claire, excuse me. Yeah, 5H didn't quite work out that spot. Finds the low max meter basically for both players here. Let's go for the RC. Finds the close slash. Very aggressive choices. Gets the JP. Whoa. RTL! And that's going to go through the wall. What a conversion there. Positive bonus here on Scambolini's side. Just goes up for the 5K meaty. Yeah, because the slowdown. I knew he had time for the heavy stun edge here. Might want to burst. We'll see. Still holding on to it. OTG, are you going to spend it? Goes oh. for the DP, but the back turn S, it's not going to hit. Yeah, good spacing there and good on holding on the burst. Not always correct. As much as I want to see people do it, it's not always correct to be a hero. <laughs> yeah, this time they're spending the burst immediately after that jump in from MFCR. Not going to save Scamalini too much though because they're still going through the wall. Tough situation to have to deal with here. Dashes up. The throw actually whiffs there. First world problems, low two plus. Gets the counter hit, and that is like the dream starter. Yeah, absolutely. Highest damage starter for Kai by far. Dashes up, blocks the DP. Deepa kill tries to slide on in. They are spending the We are the guilty meter. gearing. <laughs> this is high level meter exchange that you are seeing right here. MFCR is the one who comes out on top, though, having the positioning. RC, oh, going for the 6K after the RC2, just trying to get those extra plus frames. Too far away for the OTG! This is still so scary, the clean oh. jump in, and that's gonna be the round. MFCR up 2 Oh, that one does not feel good. Scambolini was so committed to the fireball there, and when you see that life total, how could you not be? Anything chips at that point. You're just looking to catch your opponent off guard, not quite holding their FD in the correct timings. Oh, that's a heartbreaker, but I mean, MFCR, great presence of mind to recognize that an up forward there, while in a lot of other situations would seem very obvious, was actually a pretty solid play against the fireball game of Kai. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've already seen it before, too, that he's jumped over some of these fireballs oh, yeah. and scored those counter hits, right? But of course, when you're in that high stress situation where you're looking for that one last hit, sometimes you kind of flail a little bit, right? You go for what feels comfortable, even if it's already been defeated before. Let's see, Scambolini stealing himself here, yeah, rolling he's, up the sleeves. He's a little bit of a course correction. It's not, not many adjustments need to come. These are very, very manageable, very, very close games, but MFCR just keeps edging it out just by a hair. And that's what we're talking about when it comes to, you know, the player matchup. These two play a lot at their locals. 2-0 though, a 3-0 comeback. This would be a hell of a story for Scambolini, but the throw starts it off. MFCR says the only story we're going to be talking about is mine. And we are just going for throw after throw here. Strike the damn finally goes for it. First comes out from Scambolini. Trying to make this comeback. Does that reversal though. Dashes up, gets him again. Oh, oh. dragon install. I'm listening. OTG. No, dude, no! <laughs> it's not over yet. The prophecy hasn't been fulfilled. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, dude, I just wanted to win. It's only done it God one time in the history, it. bro. In history. <laughs> I respect it, though. 2K2D knockdown. Goes with the cross up. Nice DP. Yeah, into the OTG. Very nice. It's a good start for Scambolini. No hard knockdowns. So we do go back to neutral with a 6P answer there from MFCR. Bro, the range on that. Wow, DP again after the tag to straight from neutral. Looks for the S. Here's the parry. Is it going to work? Yeah. Oh my god, another high level exchange there with the RCs, but is able to throw the run through. Fireball dash up plus frames. Blocks the DP. Oh, and there it is with the 2K. We made sure to go for the 2K knowing that, you know, we don't have to extend the combo anymore. So we want to go for the fastest option we have. There's a chance that close slash could have dropped and we didn't want to take that risk. I like that. Nice counter hit. Gets to confirm off the hard knockdown. All right, shock state applied again. Tries to go for the gold oh, first. Yeah. That whiff is really unfortunate. Now you have nothing to protect you except for your 50 meter. Block on that one, blocks 2D as well. Cross up after cross up, finally finds a throw. Back turn, gets the hit, gets the wall stick, and the super's gonna do it. MFCR, gonna take a three to zero, gonna move forward, but Scambolini, man, a great tournament run. Yeah, absolutely, give it up for Scambolini, putting on a show here with Kai. That is going to be MFCR scooting on forward a little bit at a time here. You know, obviously we try to keep our bias together, but you know this. 
of course. Penis right is here. very own. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to head on to the other side of losers now after that one. That was uh, definitely good exchanges between the two. Uh, you know, you like to see a little dra a little bit of dragon install. But unfortunately, uh, I feel like it's a similar tale to tape as, though, uh, as the situation before. MFCR not only kind of just getting more mileage per hit, but also kind of winning those interactions. When we saw all those interactions where there were 150 meter, two bursts dumped into the interaction, MFCR generally was coming out on top of those. Even if it wasn't very much reward winning those and winning those and losing those can be incredibly mentally taxing yeah for sure i mean it just the, the relentless offense the left and rights over and over all that great defense eventually was just getting whittled down over time right yeah. you can block but you can't block forever you normally say that about milia but the same thing holds true for leo it's those left rights are just so brutal but you know one must stay one must go we have to keep it moving it's nitro Ooh. Back up once again against a new record. Here. Facing off against the wrecker. The wrecker. The, the new wrecker. The wrecker. <laughs> I mean, one thing we have to acknowledge in this match is obviously Nitro is very well versed in a lot of Jacko's tricks. Yes, absolutely. You know, being a former Jacko player himself, he's going to have a different perspective when it comes into this matchup here. But we'll see how Giovanna is going to play with it. I feel like Giovanna has a, you know, her rushdown tools again, very good at getting in. Jacko's big weakness is the lack of defense, right? Yeah. When it comes to her without her minions, wait, did he just hand? <laughs> he's handing over the sticker. He says, here, bro, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong camera. That one's for Wrong you. Wrong camera. I'm not about that life anymore. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I'm not built for it anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no he, he said, gave it back. He said, now give it back. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see it, though. Definitely going to be exciting to see how it goes. I mean, obviously, Geo, that in and out game definitely works out very well. Has a good 6P also for breaking minions, mm -hmm. but we've already seen New Wrecker has shown immediately that if you're just going to spam 6P to break minions, that we already have an answer completely dialed up for that. Yeah, absolutely. It, and it is the guard, the guard command there, just knocking you back a little bit, allowing Jack to freely run in and put that pressure on you. You can also start going into like the mortar fire, right? You don't see it as often, <laughs> but like, you can start to change up the timing for it as well. <laughs> So you're talking a lot of mess for somebody who's uh, looking for some coordinates on a map, dog. <laughs> here we go. The pressure is already up. Classic vintage Jacko here. Oh, sneaks in the extra minion. Gets the burst to clear the screen. Oh, the 2D, though. So, Gio, listen, I'm, you're not the only one. I've still got it. And this is a huge early lead here from Noob Record. Getting the kick. There we go, straight to the spinning top. That's the first round done. That's with max meter still available. Did that poke, trying to stop sign as many of these dashes as he can. Close slash, falls up with the secondary and the attack command. Two minions already acquired, but it's a great match on the 5P. Look at the 5 HX man just going on in with that spinning top. But nice confirm immediately into the guard crush. Blue beat combo, lots of damage for a blue beat combo. Good lord. Oh my god, look at your life bar <laughs> mix-up. Potentially just one more. Gets that hit again, has the RC. Burst comes back, but not quite in time. I think he would have held it anyways, but spinning dog kick is enough to take kill. Yeah, holding on to burst would have been smart there, even if we had the opportunity to spend it. You want to have that get out of jail free card going into this third round. Sends out the minion, rushes right on in. And utilizing that wild assault to get the free minion set up. There's the counter hit. Straight through. Yeah. Immediately into it. Don't let it get too scaled. Just get that positive. Whoa. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, that looks like pop-up damage. <laughs> but there's the burst. Nitro not out of it yet. Dashing up with those five Ps, but finally gets caught by the wild assault. YRC, I like it, but does get tossed. Yep, still is able to secure that back throw. Get yourself into a better position here. It secures the first game. Dual one. And yeah, pretty decisively, too. Just Nitro, again, even though he is a seasoned Jackal player, having a difficult time dealing with that pressure in the corner. Anyone will, honestly, especially when you don't have a DP. Okay. Keeping that pressure applied. Goes for the soccer kick. Not quite able to find it here. Look at this dash pressure over and over. The dash cancels. The fear gauge is full. There's the mortal counter. 
Yeah, Nitro spending the burst there, knowing that the damage is going oh! to be massive. The JK just barely was able to make it work. Wild Assault gets the minion, finds the throw. Pressure continues. Ooh, into the low on the other side. Full in the 5D, tap dust, gonna be enough to do it. There's one thing I noticed about Newbrecker that does make me a little scared sometimes is that there are situations where he can spend the 50 meter to get the kill, but he just goes for the reset to set the minions anyway. Still, things are working out for him at the moment here, but we'll see how that pays off in the long run. Ooh, falls off the wall. Still all right, though. Goes some flip. Nice way to deal with it here. FD pushes out just enough to where we're able to take some offense back. Jacko, another character on the list of health not mattering. Here comes the pressure. Ooh, the poke out immediately into the flip kick, the enhanced flip kick into the OTG. You may be nervous, <laughs> but it does kill. Final round here. This is so important for Nitro. You do not want to set yourself up to need three in a row. Oh, beautiful backdash, though. Now trying to strike back. Tried to challenge Spiral Arrow, though, but they get caught. Bro, it's just going. It just keeps going. Elysium Driver, is that going to be able to get the whip punish? It does. <laughs> Even Nitro was like, okay, that range was a little crazy. Slows it down after the minion YRC clears it out. Deflect shield to reset neutral. And the oh my god. Yeah, challenging. That's crazy. Great interaction here. And there we go. Stuffing Giovanna's startup. That is so important there. Because if she's able to land those special moves that have that extra startup, she does get plus frames. Which means the, the offense just continues. There we go. DP into another DP or flip kick, excuse me. Bobo blocks the low. Pretty easy to deal with at that point. Goes for the BRC to try and close the distance after the deflection. Finds the touch, not enough to kill. But we just need to find anything, anything will do. It gets caught in the back dash by the 5H. Low profiles. Just block comes through, doesn't get much. Still in this, finds the knockdown. And just harassing there, back dashes again. But that roundhouse kick is the end of your turn. Oh no! No minions available. Goes for the shield command. And you see the. That letting out the breath, right? Like you were holding your breath during that entire interaction. I also don't know that I've ever seen a health bar with that little life in it. <laughs> oh my god. I was definitely living on a prayer on that one. It's all right though, makes it one to one. A much more manageable situation for Nitro. That 2 0 deficit might have been like the nail in the coffin, dude. Yeah, absolutely. And here we go. Strike for a game coming into full effect. Oh my god, and just the way that we went all throw before, it's oops all strikes on the mix up this time in the corner. Elysium Driver, it hurts so much. It does it hurt hurts so much. So much. Newbreaker is also just so good at keeping up the pressure with only like one minion on screen. Every yeah. once in a while we see two, but I don't think we've seen three yet. We got three on accident once. <laughs> oh, there we go, two out now. Which is a shame because Minion 3 is my oh. favorite, but an amazing punish. Elysium Driver again early in the combo. I'm scared to say it. Okay, you're alive. <laughs> barely. <laughs> Just barely, though. Still has 50 meter available, too. Goes to the YRC. Backs up. It does get caught by the low. Dude, long legs on Jacko reaching out deep. Good God. And now Newbrecker, one away from moving on here in the bracket and eliminating Nitro. You can see he's feeling good about himself, too. That's an amazing position. 2D at the round start. Catches the back dash, but Newbrecker still has time. 5P for the anti-air. Spends the burst. Exchange. Ends up going in the favor of Newbrecker here, I do believe, because of the pressure in the corner. But Nitro oh, almost with a turnaround. That is tragic. They're just a little too far away to get the pickup on the enhanced DP. And look at the damage. You don't even get the wall break either, so you're still stuck in the corner. 2S coming through. Oh, stop whistling in his face. Nah, son. Dashes up. Aggressive again. Gets the recall on the minion here. All right, Wild Assault this time. Just trying to push all the way to the other coast. Should get the kill here. Absolutely does. All right, Nitro still alive. Got to make this 2-2. Two to two. Got to take us to the final game. We've had so much 2-2. Two to two. So many final games. It just continues to be this way. Blue beat. And look at the damage, like you said. Gets the wild assault. It's going to save the meter. Good call. Oh, and the hesitation there. Dashes up, gets the throw. Yeah, don't overextend. You don't need to. With the 5K whiff punish. 
Newbrecker understanding there was no reason to spend the burst there. It was going to get blocked off of a 5K starter. And just like that, sets us up for another final game here. Two to two, Bro. losers, quarters. Again, a guaranteed top four spot on the line here. Close slash, establishes the minions, gets the counter hit, and he makes the burst. All right, now here you are, once again, in a familiar place. Mask is on. Still only keeping one minion out, even with the mask on. Just building up that risk gauge. Finally gets the soccer kick. And oh my god. <laughs> You're just so dead. A perfect. If there was ever a way to build that momentum, you set yourself up wonderfully here. One round away, potentially here with the 5k. Great press. Yeah, there we go. Into the counter hit. But again, the DP not working out the way that Nitro wants it to. I just hit it's not, uh, not exactly a traditional DP, but does meet him in the air here. Full confirm. Nice from Nitro and able to get the wall assault as well. Yeah, holding on to that meter here for the BRC mix-up. Goes low. Nice defense there from Newbrecker. But can we fight back? It's hit by the roundhouse kick. Flip to the other side, RC. No reason to spend the burst. Hold on to it. This is it. Final game, final round. Yeah, holding on to your full burst here is definitely crucial. Nitro coming in with one deflect shield or one wild assault, that half burst. Gonna come in clutch. Gold versus blocked. The resource is wasted here. Newbrecker in the corner. And there we go. DP hitting its mark, but it's gonna send Newbrecker all the way mid screen. All right, nowhere to run. You're in the corner now. Only way to go is forward. Oh, and forward he does go. Finds the knockdown, gets the minion out. Nice little left-right mix up there. Meter still building for both players. Jacko about to be sitting on an RC here, even on the totals. All right, Minions out again. Now in the corner. Gets the throw. This could be it. Goes for the reversal. Spinning dog kick has 100 meter. RC drift upwards just to jump out of the corner. That's just away. Gets the connection. No. Let's get the kill. Tap the dust. As the meter, Elysium Driver, there you go. New Brecker says that another one to the list. We're wrecking them all. <laughs> Incredible. Able to wear that storm that you can see the emotion on New Brecker's face, how exhausting these matches have been, but he is still in it, still has a chance to keep going. And doing it as Jacko, especially, as we've said a multitude of times, decision fatigue is one of those things that really starts to take hold of you in like versus games, games like Guilty Gear, where there's an abundance of resources to keep track of, yours, your opponents, the amount of micro interactions you're playing per second is unbelievable sometimes. So sure. it can get tiring, especially coming in from losers. Newbreaker has a lot more games to play, but still in it, still alive, guaranteed top four. Absolutely, I mean, you look at the amount of inputs per minute it, that Jackal players have to do, right? Uh, of course, when you're playing a character like Zato, you're controlling two characters. Of course. Sometimes you're controlling what feels like four characters when you have <laughs> all three play. minions on screen. But that's smart from Newbrecker to have a really solid game plan limited to about one to sometimes two minions, right? Yes. To make that decision fatigue just a little bit easier. But the game plan still works out incredibly well. No, nah, absolutely. But with the bracket here, you can see we've taken it from hundreds to eight to four. A boy in Cheerio coming in the winner's finals, loser's side, loser's semis, new record, and MFCR. Gold Lewis, Potemkin, Jacko, Leo. What a top four. A hell of a spread. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like the most surprising thing to me is no Ram, but we'll, well, we won't dwell on that for too long because, no, I no, mean, that character is bonkers. But, yeah, I mean, a good character diversity spread here in the top four. I'd like to see that no repeat situation. But we are going to head to the winner's side now. A boy and Cheerio is going to be our lead-off situation here going into top four. Yeah, so we've talked about a lot of, you know, uh, problem matchups for Potemkin. It's, it's very difficult to say that Potemkin has really any good matchups. Yeah, there's not, ama it's not too many that are amazing. But this is one of the more difficult ones, I would say. I 100% agree. This one is very, it's very difficult here. It feels like uh, he has the, you are in a situation where he feels like he has better buttons than you and also is executing an easier game plan. Not necessarily easier to execute in that sense, but easier to a, a more achievable game plan yeah. from Gold Lewis. I'm going to hit you with this coffin until, you're, until you stop moving. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Potemkin, very large target for the coffin, first of all. And second yeah. of all, finding things like pop busters against uh, Gold Lewis, who is uh, surprisingly active for a big man, yes, absolutely. is he very is difficult. <laughs> 
not only is he moving, he stays at a pretty decent range too, yeah, right? Like absolutely. he can swing at you with those behemoth type boons from a really safe distance, and most of them are plus on block, meaning that, you know, finding that gap to get that Potemkin Buster out is gonna be difficult. And Potemkin, while he does do a lot of damage, it's all about finding that damage. That's the difficult thing, is finding actually getting damage, in and yeah. starting that game. But don't worry, Potemkin players, if they ever put Slayer in this game, you'll finally have a good matchup, all right? <laughs> he does have tools, though, obviously, <laughs> because a lot of the times you'll see things like um, Gold Lewis's will lean into things like they'll go for Far S, uh, Max Distance, and then try and go Behemoth from there. We do have Slide Head. We do have Hammer Fall. Situations like that. Armor is really good. Slide Head is going to be a key piece of the matchup here. But, because, uh, like, if... If you ever try to use Skyfish or you ever call, try to call the drone mm -hmm. randomly in neutral, that is a very easy reaction for Potemkin. He's going to knock you down. He's going to close the distance. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a little bit easier in this version of the game now because yes. the drone goes away when Gold Whisk gets hit, right? Yeah. In past versions of the games, it Much felt needed. unwinnable because he sets the drone. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, I got slide right, head, I but lost. I still can't go in. <laughs> Yeah, the exactly. moment the drone comes out, that's it. You slide head and you hit him and you hammer fall into the drone as fast as you can, and then you play like slightly disadvantaged neutral for your good reaction. You're yeah, like, Dude, come on, are you serious? It is still not an enjoyable matchup at all for Potemkin, yeah. but we'll see if anyone can do it. It is a boy, right? Uh, definitely agreed, but we'll see. I mean, Cheerio, obviously a tough customer to come by as we get a we got our uh, TOs on the stage now getting some things set up and getting some things arranged. Again, thank you for the patience. And thank Absolutely. you for tuning in. I just want to uh, say once again, uh, thank you specifically to the Guilty Gear community uh, that we get to work with so often here at TNS. Uh, it's been so much fun to get to run the amount of, we're at 100 something yeah. for the Guilty Gear Strive it's tournaments. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure week in and week out to get to do this. And I'm so glad that we get to continue to do whatever we can to support this community that I can speak for myself and I know I can speak for you as well. Uh, and a, a community and a game that have given us a lot. <laughs> a lot, yeah. More than I can ever give back, for sure. But, you know, while we're in this downtime here, uh, you know, getting things set up, I want to ask all the viewers at home and all of you out in the crowd, too. Of course, we have the silhouette coming up for the brand new character. Listen. Who do you think it is? I'm I can ready. hear you all back here, so yell it out. I'm ready. Well, I'm ready. I hear Venom. I'm ready to I get hear Venom. I'm ready for Venom to hit me with a baguette. <laughs> is what hear, I'm ready for. <laughs> I hear ABBA. I hear Venom. Raven? Ooh, I Raven? Raven. Raven would be kind of That cool. silhouette doesn't make sense for Raven, but I like your energy. <laughs> I like your energy. I don't know. He's got hair. He's got some uh, like, no, piece no, of no. hair. You know, they might have changed him up a little bit. Have you seen his, his overture design? That's true. His overture actually, design is yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, kinda and regardless crazy. of what it's going to be, I have to say uh, kudos to Arxis uh, for how they've done with this game. Uh, I feel like every single new character has been an absolute home run, as well as the redesigns of characters. Oh, uh, whatever they do, whether it's a new character, whether it's a returner, uh, they made Elf Elk cool to me. So... <laughs> At this point, I believe in them to do whatever they need to do. Yeah, and that takes a lot of work. Let me you tell know you know how hard right? it is to me. <laughs> let me tell you. After fighting that character for seven for ten oh years now at this God, point. Oh my God, dude! And here we go. Looks like we are going to jump into a, possibly a button check here to get things started. Yeah, they're sitting down, getting themselves all ready to go. But like we said, it is going to be the Gold Lewis facing off against the Potemkin. It is going to be a boy versus Cheerio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, practice those Kara. <laughs> I can see it right over here on the other screen. He's practicing the Kara pop busters. They're gonna need those in this matchup. Oh, uh, and you see the flag too. Can I just say also, shout out to North Carolina. Someone from there, y'all, y'all do me proud. That's so <laughs> sick. I love you guys as a community. It's cool to see you guys everywhere. And y'all been killing it across every Guilty Gear game recently, by the way. Don't think we don't see the results. Absolutely, another region rising up in the rankings. It's not all about the mid best anymore. Oh, you're gonna specifically call them out? Yeah, yeah, because they always say they're the best at Guilty Gear, even though you know they get washed by Florida players a Fake. lot. But. I respect that. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. See, I like uh, I like when Jobber pulls the mask off a little bit. Just uh, give me a, just a, a glimpse of it. Hey, regional rivalries are fun. They're part of what makes fighting games, you know, of very course. enjoyable. <laughs> Hold that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But here we go now. Like I said, you know, just getting things together, getting things started. Uh, Dude, it has been an incredible time here at TNS9. Uh, hopefully we get to do this again sometime soon. Definitely make sure you check it out. Uh, hanging out at the Wyndham has been... Uh it has been uh, the the relaxation that I needed. The vibes have been absolutely incredible. The venue has been amazing. Karaoke every night. Oh, the, spelling, the spelling bee <laughs> was an absolute pleasure to I, get to watch. I need you. I, look, I hate to put him on the spot like this. Don't do it, bro. He's had. He's, he's, he's already dead. But I want you all to know that I even practiced the word turbulence with Cole. Oh, no, and he went up dude. there and disappointed me, all right? <laughs> all right, listen. Goal. Don't make fun of him right in front of him. Not in front of Wooper. Not in front of Wooper. 
with that. Probably Wooper. Yeah, and our things together. A Wooper is a good, I mean, if you're going to pick goated. your favorite Pokemon, that's like a pretty good one. I mean, I'm a Wobbuffet fan, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's just, they're that, cousins. <laughs> that's just little Wobbuffet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but getting ourselves together, getting it locked in. The fist bump comes through, and it's time to get rolling. Winner's side. Winner's final tier, TNS9. Oh, my God. The big boy this is what I've been waiting for. These are the two remaining big bodies here in the bracket. Whatever happens, we all win. Duel one. All right. Starting off strong. 2K 2D right away for the whip punish there. Looking for the pressure. Yep, the first comes out now. Cheerio, patient. Just looking to see what a boy is going to do. A lot of times it looks awkward, but you can do that against Potemkin a lot of the time. Uh, most characters can just kind of chill. It's not like he has a dash. What's he going to do? Yeah, at full screen, he's either going to go for Hammerfall forward, slide head to try and get a knockdown. And now we have the pressure going with the Giganter. Good block. Steadfast defense there on the down back. Gets the IV. Gets us in the flick, though. Keeps himself safe. Yep, sends out the drone. That's where it really locks down the neutral. Gets in for free. There's the deflect shield sliding on in with the break. And it is really just a lot of look. Look at these back dashes we're seeing. Finally, a boy is able to find that knockdown on the startup of the drum, but wasn't able to close the gap. This matchup goes so slow. It's so difficult for Potemkin to make to close the distance in a lot of different cases. And Golos just has so many good tools to keep him out. Knockdown on the punish, sets up the drone. Megavis over it. I love the idea. Gets a 2D. Little chunks of damage. Take what you can get for both players here. You can't overcommit. As soon as Gold Lewis starts overcommitting, that's where he'll potentially start to fall into the traps here. Oh, but there we go. Slide right on in again. Look at all of these Karas. But able to throw the very first white wild assault that we see of the set. Chiario is locked in, taking the first round. Wow, and a, a grind of a first match there. 81 seconds to be able to put him away. That's one of the longest rounds I've ever seen in Strive. <laughs> All right, there we go. Cross up with the JH. Okay, gets the counter flick on the frame trap. Knockdown, set up the drone. Yep, and the drone has multiple hits, which means it's going to blow through Potemkin's armor. That's one of the reasons why it is so strong in this matchup, not only from a mix-up perspective, but from a neutral perspective as well. Finds a gold burst, though. Plenty of meter. Oh, oh my god. The classic. Yeah, toss you, get up close, send out the super. Scoop. Wow. Recognized there was going to be a gap at that point. It completely passed its mark. I think the Cheerio was expecting it, you know, just because. Yeah, and even toss him right onto the end of the Aegis reflector there. We chill. Yeah, I mean, no reason to overextend it on. Overextending oh. is the worst thing you can do against Potemkin. Slow and steady wins the race here. Knockdown, has meter as well, gets the throw, smart. Hella plus range, but there's the back dash. Too far away, so we had to go for the RC, right? We did not want to get knocked down. Over oh, the run of 2D, Mortal Counter. A boy reeling back in his chair from that one. Oh, man. And that's one of the toughest things, too, is that uh, on any punish coming out from Gold Lewis, and there is a lot of punishable things from Potemkin, uh, he's going to get a knockdown. 2P into the, one of the quicker behemoths. You can just kind of close it, knock, get, get the knockdown, set yourself up for a perfect pressure. You got to be really careful. Here we go, just trying to poke with that bar slash, get anything started. There's the 5H with the punish. Okay. But even when you get a whip punish like that, you can't close the gap as big as you would like to. A little Nature Boy action with Stan Heavy. <laughs> the knife edge chop. Like that. Definitely gonna go for the cancel. Finally, the 5D lands there and it's able to get the wall break. Here we go again with the Kara Garudas. But Cheerio not gonna hold on to it for too long. Wake up first from a boy trying to go for that slide head to get that knockdown, get something started. All right, I got a drone too, buddy. <laughs> okay, had to quick into a knockdown there. Gets the back dash to avoid the close slash. Can't quite get the anti air from that spacing. Definitely tough. Well, he threw out that 6H. He was really looking for a big swing, a home run there. Oh, good flick, though. Put you in a really good spot here. The RC tries to go for the low. Nice block from Cheerio. The discipline to hold down back is crucial. Oh, but it's all right. 
gets the PRC immediately into the 5P. And you're seeing, too, a lot of really micro movements here from a boy are what make the difference. After he got up close, he went for two steps, two steps before going for a button to try and make Cheerio flinch. That is your only way to really auto time and delay for a backdash also. So potentially that as well. Now here we go, slide head again while you're in the corner. You gotta be careful for those JDs. We've got double Garuda. Every time we've had an opportunity for Garuda, I'm waiting for the day that we go Pop Buster first. Here we go, slide right on in. Just trying to go for the 5P meaty. Oh my god. Send it out one more time with the tap dust. The no mix mix is wonderful. I like that he's going tap dust every single time because it's putting you on notice. You gotta be thinking about it. Yeah, but that's also the conditioning, right? Because now we can start sprinkling in the lows no. as we get deeper into the set. Do it the whole time. <laughs> Are you saying if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Absolutely. And if it does break, just you know, just fix it. Just do it again. It'll be fine. Duty just block. Unfortunately, it doesn't buy you enough room here. Pressure in the corner. Just getting mauled right now. Still has a super, but it's just going to break the wall instead. Yeah, no knockdown, but it's all right. We have such a huge life lead and just so many resources to put out here. Yep, RC. Ooh, I thought he was going to try to challenge to break the armor there right after the first hit. And there Finally. we go. Slide right on in. Huge grip of damage, goes to the White Wild Assault. Now you're stuck in the corner. There it is again with the Kiganzer. But White Wild Assault's right through it! Good luck on everything, though. Has the White Wild Assault on his own! But Cherio knew! That was so smart, setting up the drone, knowing that you had just done the same to him. You know it's on his mind. Yeah, you're putting it in there, right? <laughs> like a little seed waiting for it to grow. And again, just that full screen play. Who's gonna make the first move? Just waiting for that one jump in the IAD. Send out the drone, and now we're gonna close the gap. There's the knockdown. But Cheerio getting tossed back into the corner. And there's the pop buster. Do we spend the meter? Yes, we do. Into the flick. Oh, we missed the Kara. The Kara Mega Fist. Oh my god. Human Rocket, though, still able to close it. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, able to bring it back up after that little drop. And now, both these players trying to fight for that lead here. Cheerio sitting on a hundred burst. Has two white wild assaults available. From no one's taken a hit, and it's been over 10 seconds. There we go, finally. Into the drone to be the one to play. Ooh, Spoiler, what a punish! punish. Punish on the 2D. Yeah, you better be canceling your normals. Oh, with the JK. Fuzzy coming through. Stop on the toes. Get the wall break there with the drone. Doesn't get the hard knockdown, though. Oh, my God. All right. Going back to the double Garuda here. Again, the conditioning is just we're going to keep it going. Oh, and the wire seat coming through. There we go, gripped up again. Still not enough, though. Trade gets a trade. This is so close, 6K into the flip. Oh, you got a, you got empty, no! Skyfish. Absolutely menacing in that spot, completely pushes away and blows it to dust. Unreal, and you see, a boy does not feel good about that one. Not at all, but still, you cannot allow that to tilt you. You gotta keep the mental game. Again, spacing it with Chiro. Chiro really is just kind of looking for a slide head, right? A slide head to yeah. IED on. Nice jump over. Crucial spacing, looks for the back dash, finds a knockdown though. All right, but now we're done waiting, moving on in. There's the PRC able to catch the back dash there with the close slash, getting the first out of Cheerio. Ooh, maybe couldn't go for the punish there because of the distance. Still a little two-piece there after the flick. Oh, no! Sliding right on in, put hands on him. The only time Goldos looks small is when Potemkin's carrying him. <laughs> 
He looks like a normal sized character in his, in his big carrying arm. Oh no. That had to have been a missed input there. I don't think we wanted to play shield. I think we wanted white wild assault in that situation. But now down on burst. Cheerio recognizing that. Oh, wow, wow, wow. wow. We, Tempco players are disgusting. We bro. say in this matchup all the time you have to be brave against Gold Loose, but I wasn't expecting that level of bravery. Here's the super tap to dust. Not breaking the wall though. Oh, but the IED over. There's the far slash able to hit the big body. Oh, the cross-up comes through. Chira sitting on a lot of meter here. A boy needs to be careful. No meter to empty either, meaning all this chip's gonna add up. Oh, he breaks right in front of his face, expecting him not to press. And there it is, Mega Fist backwards, hitting the legs. We're going to game five again. <laughs> Big sip of water, big contemplation. The thinker. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get yourself together here. I mean, this is such an important thing. Guaranteed top two potentially. <laughs> Wooper, As our, our, our guardian watching over the stage. Jared needs to consult Wooper about this matchup. <laughs> Wooper doesn't play gold loose. <laughs> here we go. The execution's too high. He doesn't have hands, Jobber. There we go, Garuda on in again. Double Garuda, burst comes out this time for Cheerio. Clean jump in there on the slide hit attempt. The first for burst will take it. Oh! Stop the Skyfish, here comes the super. Oh, and the pop buster again. Breaking the back. I like those little delays. Really good idea here, 6K into the Garuda, steals the turn into the flick this time. Oh, the back dash there on the 2K attempt. Oh, answer the drone. And there we go. One round away now for a boy for moving on to grand finals. Gets a throw. Yeah, with the headbutt. Go for the big plus frames there. Oh my god, bro. The way that he's breaking right in his face. Ooh. Yeah, much too far away. Maybe meant for a behemoth there. Continue swinging. JK. Oh, recognize the slump last second there. Said, okay, hold on. I'm not going to break the wall. I want to keep you right here. But there's just a walk up Pop Buster. Trying to even up these life totals. Pop oh, Buster again. No. Are and we going to make it a triple? Look at the meter. It's going to happen. Oh, he goes to the 5D. Garuda. White Wall Assault straight through, but gets tossed. Meter is available now for Cheerio. Okay, continuing the chip to Flex Shield, gets you some room. Look at this, back dash again, sends out the drone. Oh, he flicks it back! So smart, perfect way to deal with that, especially being able to make Gold Loose Block at the same time. Menacingly walking forward, it's not enough! Oh, but the White Wall Assault through! And Cheerio able to get the confirm, taking it the distance. <laughs> The both of them, they know. Final game, final round. A boy gonna be the first one to make it here to the White Wild Assault. How are we gonna spend this par? Right flick is a little too far away. Unfortunately, not gonna get much off that White Wild Assault, but does close the distance a little bit. Slowly walking Cheerio to the corner. That 6K is definitely a big risk here. Finds the knockdown, big damage. And all this chip is adding up. Finally gets caught overhead again. No still, meter. Still not dead, but this is a terrible situation here. Go for it, Pop Buster! Opportunity, one more potentially. Sliding on in, tries to go for the 5K. The hell of my baby. Oh my god, Gigander! Does this kill? It, it is dead! Dead! A boy somehow makes it work! That is Potemkin in grand finals winner's side and it's all thanks to a boy what a crazy play from this guy your eyes do not deceive you bad matchups be damned a boy has the heart has the fighting spirit but that's the problem with potemkin it's not bad matchups they're just matchups you it's know what match you're, you know what you're getting into and a, somehow continues to find a way a boy is an absolute killer guaranteed top two here at TNS9. Wow.
incredible stuff that we're seeing here at TNS. But Chirio is still in it. Can fight all the way to Grand Finals on the loser side to get that run back. So don't count him out quite yet. Absolutely not. And this puts us into what I always preach is probably the most important match other than the actual one to decide the winner. We're getting into winner sem uh, to loser semis, which is going to be a winner stays type of situation here. There'll be look people over this. the bracket to take a look. <laughs> New Wrecker and MFCR, the first ones to play. Winner stays on to play Cheerio, and the winner of that is going to come up to try and play potentially two sets into what could be the, the nastiest Potemkin we've seen in forever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at his path to Grand Finals here, right? Going through Cheerio and going through MFCR in grueling five game sets. This is, it was not easy to get here. This is the best offline performance from Potemkin, I think, since the Snake Eyes Texas Showdown incident. I absolutely, yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> like, correct. Jesus, man. But either way, that is a boy guaranteed top two. But we've got to make our run through the losers here, and it starts in semis. MFCR and Newbrecker going to be the one that comes through. Oh, he has the same buttons on the stick as me. I love those. <laughs> I just noticed that. I just noticed the color, and I was like, ooh. The nice lime green. <laughs> that looked good. Horse playing on the hitbox here. TNS zone MFCR. But we'll see Jacko versus uh, Leo is another interesting matchup as yeah, well, right? Leo generally, um, on paper, struggles against characters with pretty decent zoning. Yeah. And there are a lot of cases where Jacko can kind of play that game, right? She can sit back, she can send out the minions, utilize the attack command, utilize the guard command even from so far away to try and keep the opponent out. But we already mentioned it every single time. Doesn't matter how good your offense is, even when Jacko puts him into the corner, the great equalizer is the flash kick. Yes. And uh, it's hard to find a goal, or not a goal, excuse me, a Leo player who utilizes flash kick better than MFCR. No, definitely agree. But we'll see how it goes between the two. Yeah, I mean, that's an important thing to note, I think, too, is that the fireball coming out from Leo is pretty good, yes. but it can't quite equalize because it's a good anti-fireball fireball, but Jacko's projectiles are fireballs with an asterisk because they are a little bit more mobile, have some crazy arcs they can go at. It's not quite as simple as counter-calling projectiles as Leo normally does against other characters. Yeah, for sure. It looks like we're going to jump into a button check here, possibly. Warm things up a little bit, make sure everything is good to go before we jump into this match. Remember, this is the loser side of the bracket. So loser goes home. And winner has to stay on in the hot seat. Or maybe oh we're no, just jumping right into game? it. Okay. Yep, we're right uh, into it. Straight in. So here we go. Loser semis. And right off the bat, new record. Just that clean touch. High low type of situation. Not quite gonna be able to make it work. Has to go for the burst. All right, but there's the run through. Tries to go for another cross up, but a nice just 5 PRC there from Newbrecker to check MFCR. You're not going to get away with reset so easily against me. And there it is, DP right away, right? Blowing up two of those minions, allowing MCR to escape from the corner. That's what a lot of your game plan, a lot of your pressure is going to have to revolve around trying to figure out how to bait out that DP and get the reward off of it. RC4 definitely strong. Gets that poke and the counter hit. Knockdown comes through once again. Double close slash gets the little juggle to alley oop from the minion, and that is the round. Yeah, very clean play there from Newbrecker. Let's see if we can keep it up. Remember, we talked about that, that decision making fatigue, right? Playing this character definitely can't wear on your mental. But so good defending against her. Yeah, absolutely. Back turn stance, gets the overhead. Double juggles back and forth. Nice IBFD. Still has not been able to get away from the pressure, though. Here comes the reversal, super, he's blocking, absolutely. Yeah, I and mean, there's the punish, that should be a clean round here. Yep, no drops, just goes for the axe kick. Now start again, MCR immediately poking out with those lows. Fishing for those lows to try and catch Newbrecker, overextending. Ooh, okay, I like that jump back right there into the normal. Just get rid of the minion. But still, you just slowly but surely walk all the way to the other corner here. And now this is where Newbrecker is in his element. Uh-oh. That's what I would say. <laughs> oh, no. And the overhead connects. Does that much here. Has to spend the wild assault to be able to get that hard knockdown here. Round of peace is so important to get that momentum rolling for the game here. But pressure's on. Gets the throw. Max meter. But the oh! DP! Yep. All are equal in front of the flash kick. Auto-corrects for you. You don't even have to think about it. And he loves it. 
Absolutely. The energy is perfection. Game one. A little pop off there from MFCR. Knows that this is not going to be an easy battle. Dual one. MSCR is one of, if not the most dangerous players in Strive in general when momentum is built up also. Absolutely. This guy becomes an unstoppable snowball. Yeah, once he feels itself, it's hard to make that stop. Yeah, Newbrecker, gotta keep it consistent. If we go 2-0 here, things might get a little too messy, but Newbrecker starting off super strong here. Obviously a very dominant round to start and should be able to kill off of that as well. Elysium Driver, I'm here talking about MFCR. Newbrecker says, don't forget, that's a round for me. There we go, but now we need one more to tie things up, right? Wouldn't be surprised to see this go to a game five as well. So let's see if we can get to that point. MFCR immediately going for the Wild Assault right off the bat. Give me that positive bonus. Oh, no, goes for the situation for the reset. I like that, squeezing out the extra damage. That extra damage it is. Jesus, man. A fourth life left over. Goes for the cross up, keeps on the same side there with the low, keeps the pressure going, and finds the 2D. That is a kill again. MFCR ties up the rounds with perfect. And now trying to get this hefty 2 0 lead here over Newbrecker. Right, jump back, jump back, DP, okay. <laughs> What did I tell you? I mean, they're, they're, it's hard to find anyone who utilizes the flash kick as well as MFCR does. He seems to have a sixth sense. It just it's, does it again. That's five so far in this round alone. It's actually disgusting how often he's correct with it. And there it is. Missile drop kick getting the mortal counter. Oh, oh my God, bro. yeah, just, you know. Yeah, back dash BRC forward. The classic. And there it is, headbanger into the delayed 2S to catch you, attempting to go for a throw, and he says one more. And it's not one of those situations where it's like, if you throw enough darts at a dartboard, you're gonna get a bullseye. It's the percentage yeah. hits is crazy. Because the risk reward, you know, if, if the DP gets baited and he doesn't have meter to RC it, right, he's gonna take a hefty amount of damage. So it's the confidence that he has to just send it full center, sometimes even without the meter. Okay, empty low, not gonna work. Couple cold slash, gets the minion out, gets that frame trap, Elysium Driver straight away. Yeah, that's gonna be the positive bonus here. Oh no! Just a little too far away from the corner there, but it still did an absolute drip of damage. Cross up, deflect shield on the follow up, I like that. All right, set up the minion, tries to go for the guard command, but it's gonna get hit by the guard point. Follow up there, mortal counter. Both characters not breaking the wall in this situation here, but for Leo, it's a little better. Unfortunately, the drop, but still finds a 2D afterwards. Yeah, but Newbrecker is bleeding out. There we go. Able to get the punish, but the first immediately to keep Newbrecker into the corner. Gets the pickup, and there we go. MFCR at set point. A single round here. Gotta make it work. Round starts, gets the punish, looks for the run through. Overhead, deflect shield gets away, and he's able to take that step back for the big punish. Yep, here we go. Able to finally punish the DP. So you have to do, you have to slow things down. You have to respect MFCR's wake up options, right? There it is. DP coming through again, blowing out of the corner into the BRC. Ops not to go for an overhead or low, just lands into the 6K. Punish on the throw, sets up the minion. Pilot situation for the second time. Looks for the shield. Dash up with the DP. Newbrecker starting to get these timings down. Yep. Is ready for it. Finally adapting here and getting so much reward off of it too. The only question is, is it going to condition MFCR not to DP? I think the answer is no. The answer absolutely is no. But having the correct timing still is helping out a lot. But there's a big start from MFCR. No way to get the hard knockdown. But the positive bonus definitely still what you need. You have some air fireball. Minion's gone just as fast as it came out. There's the throw in the corner. Cold burst though. Oh, gets the pick up there off the attack command immediately into the Elysium driver. How much is this gonna do? Okay. Yeah, Not about, bad. about half the life off the table. But you're still on both players. Have that 50 meter. The difference maker here. <laughs> MFCR on the burst total, but this is gonna do a grip of damage again. Still alive. And now still had space to have to put the minion behind you. Goes for the YRC just to shut that down. Doesn't want to deal with any of that offense here. A great whip punish there with the 5K. Spends the wild assault. Goes for the reset. And that should be it. MFCR. Wow. Incredibly strong performance here. You can see. Taking a look to the crowd. Even though he is going to be in the hot seat and still going to be remaining. You know, get up, stretch it out. Keep yourself together. Got a lot of work to do. Absolutely.
you still have to get through Cheerio and then a boy sitting at the top of the mountain here. But huge shots, uh, give it up for new record, obviously, a credible performance, top four, and a wonderful showing here. Seriously, amazing stuff. MFCR says, bring the next one up. It's time <laughs> to go. He said, feed me more. <laughs> Yo, right back. <laughs> Here we go. He is ready. He is ready. All smiles, ready to keep playing games here. Don't want to cool down, right? That's the danger of being in this seat as well. Once you're hot and ready to go, you need to keep the games coming. You need to keep the momentum rolling, Absolutely. especially a player like MFCR who thrives on that momentum. And he is going into a matchup that is pretty difficult for Gold Lewis. Maybe Gold Lewis's worst matchup, or one of, so? them. one of them. Definitely in the conversation for sure. Absolutely. I mean, in your opinion, what makes this so difficult? Oh, uh, DP. Flash kick. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> flash kick because of the, the ease of equalizer. input on it, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when MCR is playing on a hitbox, right? So having that that super quick responsive flash kick, you get, it's like what one frame maybe or instant, not having to actually stand up, just immediately going into it. That's going to make it so difficult because in Gold Lewis's pressure, it's about constantly going for those guard breaks, but there's a small gap in between them. Normally, when you're playing against other players, it's difficult to get in like a reversal super. It's difficult sometimes to input a regular DP. But against Leo, having a charge DP, especially on a hitbox, it makes it even more difficult to keep that pressure going. <laughs> I like the chair. It was like, are you okay with this music? And we're I don't care. <laughs> oh, he's putting we're, the Jackal theme? Bro, no. I appreciate the respect. Oh, but man, I mean, these two players have definitely played it out quite a bit. I would say, generally, I think MFCR has the has the edge in their sets, I do yep. believe. I mean, if you want to look at some uh, of MFCR's matchups against Gold Lewis players, you can just go look back at uh, DreamHack Atlanta, right? Yes, absolutely. And how it felt like the Gold Lewis players couldn't do anything. <laughs> like, you start your offense, everything. and you can't do anything because it's just flash kick after flash kick after flash kick. So again, it's going to be kind of similar like what we saw with Jacko. you got to be patient. you got to try and bait out as many DPs as you possibly can, because especially with Gold Lewis, if you can block Gold that DP wait, 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 and there's no meter for him to RC behind it, you are going to murder Leo. But the problem is, if you start leaning your offense too much around the DP, and you start leaning in for throws and things of that nature, he's going to just wake up 2D and he's going to destroy you because it is airborne. So in a situation, in a perfect world as Leo, you're not teching throws, you're drop kicking over them. Yeah, It's, exactly. the, it's the dream for him. For we sure. thought about the Kai. I know there, Cheerio does, it has been practicing it, but I don't know if it's ready. I mean, he knows this matchup is not fun. It is not fun for Gold Lewis at all. So, you know, having a character in the pocket that can handle this matchup is definitely something, you know, he's probably looking to. But we'll see. It's going to set us up here. Top three losers finals. MFCR versus Cheerio. TNS9 continues to deliver, bro. The match. Oh, to see who is going to face off against a boy, the Potemkin, waiting on top of the mountain, That's bro. That's crazy to say, bro. <laughs> Why don't Leo in the role unless just jump him? Because <laughs> Leo's got honor, okay? He's honorable, bro. I'm sorry. I just wish he still had his book where he wrote, he wrote it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 Talk about your mom's apple pie. <laughs> oh my god. So here we go. Losers finals. Gonna get it started here. We are taking a stroll. What a run forward here from Cheerio with DP already finds its mark. Yeah, MCR is going to establish that DP early to put Cheerio on notice. All right, drone coming through the immediate IAD right over to keep the pressure up. Back dash into 5k, the classic from Leo. So strong. Here okay. we go. Great damage off the super hard knockdown. Run through hits. Immediately to the RC with the pillar. That's going to be enough for the first round. Ooh, step on his toes. Oh, no. But the wake up back though here gets to the back turn. Okay, but in response. And I like setting up the drone there, right, to try and cover the DP. Because if the drone is on top of him and he goes for flash kick, even if it hits, he's still going to get hit by the drone. And that's what we're going for a lot here, right? Anytime we get a knockdown, set the drone to try and neutralize the DP. Definitely as often as you can. Finds that throw again. The headbutts find their mark. Is able to take it. Even up the rounds now. First game on the line. 
White Wild Assault straight away and finds the hit right after. Yeah, he threw it out immediately after that whip 2k because he was expecting an attempt at a whip punish there from MFCR. Oh, and what a trade! Cheerio still stuck into the corner though. He's to find a way to brute force out. And here comes the pressure. Nice backdash immediately into the trade with the 6p. Super unfortunate that traded, but still, didn't get the 5p afterwards. OTG with the behemoth. Cheerio, game one. All right, looking clean. And we've already seen he's ever since we saw, you know, his last matchups against MFCR, he's definitely made great adjustments. I love the adjustment of the moment that you get the knockdown. Set the drone, right? Set the drone, forget about it. Use it to shut down that DP reversal because that is such a huge part of this matchup. Especially with all of Leo's other good tools, right? As long as you normal, the whip punish game, the 2D, everything that we've mentioned before. Third of the life off the table, off that first interaction there. Gets a 2K 2D though, knockdown comes through. Dashes up, and the throw again, maybe a little too respectful in that situation. Oh, trying to go for the throw with no meter to back it up, a shame. But here we go, gets it this time. And he jumps into the low behemoth burst, comes out from MFCR, wants a breathing room. Oh my god. I think it's less about wanting breathing room for himself and more about wanting to take his opponent's breathing room. Oh, he wants this so bad. He was willing to spend the first, but the DP comes out. MFCR takes the round. <laughs> he shaved his arm hair off and just barely connects. Oh my god. Oh my god, what a response to you. Anytime he's holding down back, you have to be careful. Cross up is good. Looks for the 2K. Still keeping that pressure going. The Vortex continues just straight into the super. Scale as little as possible. Get that hard knockdown. And the Leo Blender is so potent. All right, harassing in the corner. There's the dash up throw. It's the RC. That's going to be a game here for MFCR with the wall break. Time things up 1 1. And we have been going the distance in a lot of these matches here today in top eight. Oh, definitely have. It's been, it has felt extremely back and forth in a lot of these interactions. It's either been 3 or game 5, like over and over again. But here we go. Starting it off again with that 1 to 1. All right, first. Doesn't want to get locked down in the corner. Understandable. In early burst, though, you can still get a lot of that gauge back if you can get a positive bonus. And now you're out. Oh, cross up attempt. Keep that pressure up. Into the axe kick to catch the back dash there. Great adjustments from MFCR. Recognizing Cheerios' habits on defense. There's the RC, puts you into the mix-up. Couple jabs in a row, dashes up. Opportunity, this would be such a ridiculous comeback in the round, but it's not gonna matter. DP, you could smell it. Yeah, I mean, he had the meter, right? He had the meter. He had the meter, you were close enough to get hit by it or be forced into a block situation, so there's no reason he was not going to go for the DP. Fucking through, somehow finds that punish back though, gets the overhead. Not quite able to find anything afterwards. Guard point stands into the wild assault, dashes back with just block in return. Oh my god, we are blocking for our life here. Look at that wrist gauge, and there it goes. Gonna cash in on that damage. But Cheerio, smartly spending the burst, knew how devastating that would have been. Still unable to escape from the corner though. DRC forward, catches the backdash there with the close slash, going for the big launcher with the 2H. Yeah, backdash normally good in that spot, but the BRC slowdown just leaves you feeling exposed. The cryptid 6P into the throw. Yeah, remember, throw is going to be DP no matter what. Gets the throw into the drone with the OTG. Cheerio, staying alive here. Super important swing game off the one to one. 6P right off the start into the wild assault, finds that cross up. Goes for the wall break, yep, with the Wild Assault this time, once that hard knockdown. Positive bonus is gonna give us a lot of meter, there's the 5D tap. Cross-up is definitely good. That was an interesting sequence of combo. Yeah, ending up jumping way back, right? Maybe trying to go for a first safe route. I believe yeah. that's what it was. We drone and we chill. Let's block. No! no! Stop blocking! Oh my god! That is tragic to see, but MFCR is going to go up 2-1 now with a perfect. And Cheerio, you can feel that. Wearing the emotion on his face. As we said before, I mean, MFCR is the type of player, if that momentum builds up, he might become that unstoppable snowball that we definitely know him for. Absolutely. We're going for a song change, though. What are we feeling? 
Extras? That's a good one. I respect it. So far, I found out that Cheerio has a pretty okay taste in Guilty Gear music. I mean, other than Perfection Can't Please Me, you're right. <laughs> it's not bad. That's the worst song in the game, bro. What? And I don't okay. even talk bad about Guilty Gear music. You know right. me. Go ahead. You Move know it me. along. I mean, I know that Guilty Gear was in your top five Spotify rap, unironically. It, it unironically yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> Back into go. it again. We, I think we were considering that character swap, but I really do like this. Even though the matchup has been tough, you've got to stick to your stuff. If you can get one game, you can get three. So you exactly. know that it's the, the, the character is not the issue here. It's just little things here and there, even though the character can be a small issue, you know. Yeah, I mean, the matchup isn't good, but Chiro's playing it very well, right? He's yeah. already gotten one game on the board here. We just need two more. You just got to dig deep. Lock in, as the kids say. So there it is, White Wall. Wild Assault, Red Wall Assault. Coming through, getting that wall break. Uh, double hit with the jump pass. Cheerio as any kind of neutral reset is so aggressive. It's just been holding the dash macro so often. And a lot of times it has been working out, but MFDR gets the better of that interaction now. Goes for the wall slump. When your opponent has full burst, there's no reason not to go for that sequence. Uh-oh, but here it is, down with the system. Still has a lot of ground to cover. There's the back throw into the RC. Isn't gonna get the kill though. Might be dangerous to leave him alive. Sets out the drone. Can Cheerio make this? This is a good start. Oh, actually runs up for the 2P. You gotta be careful there. RC is spent off of the Bazooka Dropkick. Okay. Nice tag. Yeah, he was trying to go up to get the throw and cover that uh, the DP option as well. But there it is, OTG. Chiro able to take a round. Needs one more to take this the distance to a game five. Counter right off the map, but the burst actually catching the run through, sending MFCR all the way to the corner is what I would say, but he keeps right out. Yep, and in this back turn again, that nice little sequence there, not very much damage, but does end up in a pretty advantageous position. But not mattering too much for Cheerio here if you find that knockdown, get the drone and get aggressive. Yeah, hyper aggressive here too, but there's the RC again. Leo is so dangerous at every single range proxy. It's no wonder that Cheerio is just holding onto the dash back to try and close the gap. But here we go, set point now for MFCR. He wants to move on to Grand Finals to get that run back. Yeah, you do not want to put yourself in a spot where you have to sweat a game five right before you potentially are going to go on to the finals here. Gets the throw for the punish, this is huge. All right, overhead connects. Blocks the DP, no meter to save MFCR. Oh God, is it enough? The it. Oh my god, game five, Chopper, how does this keep happening? <laughs> These players are playing out of their mind. They all want it so bad. The level of play of Guilty Gear Strive has elevated so much. Even your average pools player is a killer. Two to two. Game five, White Wild Assault. Finally starting to see it a little more aggressively here. Too far for the behemoth. Oh, and grabs the run through. That might be a good sign of things to come, but there's the DP. Try to rain on your parade. Counter here is definitely nice. Goes to the pillars, then we'll get in the back turn here. Straight into the super, break that wall. Yeah, hard knockdown here now for MFCR. Are we gonna go for the run through? Yes, we do. Again, just putting you into the blender. Scooped out of the skies. No shot. Really? Oh, super versus super. Okay. MCR going for the RC. We're going to try to break the wall of this. Oh, we don't even need to. Gets the kill. Back at set point once again. Oh, man. For your tournament life, Cheerio, two rounds in a row. Brown Star goes for the jump in. Not quite going to be able to find much. A throw from MFCR. Maybe the beginning of the end here. Through, able to catch the back dash with the back turn S. This is gonna be so difficult now. We don't have a lot of meter. All we have is enough for one wild assault. It might not matter. Chain Super not gonna be enough, but there's a tough situation. Cheerio gotta do something crazy here. Oh. Tries to go for the throw. It's not gonna get close enough. MFCR off the 2K is gonna be able to secure it and move on to the grand finals.
And this is why he gets so dangerous. Loser side MFCR in the hot seat. He was built for this. The way that the momentum builds up in his favor makes him stronger and stronger. He learns as he's fighting. But obviously an amazing showing, moving out of third place. Give it up for Cheerio. Absolutely. I'm going to miss that whooper. Me too, brother. Me too. <laughs> we'll see it at many other tournaments, though, because Chiro is one of the best players out there. Absolutely agreed. But coming to the stage now, the final boss. Potemkin himself. A boy walking on up. This is going to be an exciting one here. Can MFCR... Shaking off the nerves and the hands. Yeah, maintain composure. Is about to open up the hip. Oh, he's opening it. What you got? What are we there? doing? What, what you <laughs> got there, dog? I want to know. Hey, hey. Oh, hold up. Forgive me, <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean? Oh, my God. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, whatever it is, I respect it. There you go. So, you know, a little shout out there. I'm sure we'll see that clip. <laughs> uh oh. We're this checking makes our me buttons? nervous. Yeah, this is making this me nervous. This makes me nervous. I'm anxious about this because I have to do this to my stick all the time. So Make this sure is the like, buttons are locked in? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just don't screw the bottoms in because I have to open it so much. Yeah, last thing you want is to have some kind of button malfunction in grand finals on the loser side of the bracket, right? But we shall see two sets needed for MFCR to be able to somehow make it here over. Oh, hell. Oh, boy. Hell yeah, that's what I like to see. Come up, disconnect your controller. <laughs> Let's go. Just go desync them. <laughs> This, of course, we saw this matchup before, right? It was a, uh, a blistering, uh, well-fought match, but in the end, a boy was able to come out on top of the skin of his teeth. A very, very close one. Again, in a matchup that is, uh, has a broken record as we continue to roll with it, in a matchup that's not super good for Potemkin. Yeah, not good at all, but you know, it, like we said, if anyone can do it, a boy can do it. If he wins this, he's no longer a boy, all right? He's a man. He is a real man. No, we're still in it. <laughs> we'll see, though. Again, huge shouts to every single person involved here at TNS9, everybody watching at home on the stream, and everybody here in the crowd. Definitely good to see everybody here for er nice and early for some Guilty Gear Strive. Yeah, they, <clears throat> they turned out. That's what we like to see. Make sure you stay tuned in all day long. There's going to be even more action coming through. Finals day continues to deliver many games going to be coming to you. I believe we're going to be capping off the night with Tekken into Street Fighter a little yeah, bit later on. I'm so on. excited to see Tekken, bro. Obviously still KOF to come, as well as uh, Unist Grand Blue, I believe, is still going to be having its top eight as well. A lot of action to come, but we got to keep it here locked in. Guilty Gear Strive. Let's see. Are we jumping right into it, or is this going to be a button check? Looks like it's going to be a button check. Yeah, button check first. Yeah, especially after, especially after just opening up your stick, right? You got to get that button check in, make sure everything's working properly. MFCR, what a story it would be, and I feel like it would be the same story as the same story as normal. He is just one of those players. It feels like he, regardless of what happens, when he goes to losers, he builds up that momentum. He's able to do just incredible things to come back. Uh, sometimes it is through the winners if he's able to just kind of snowball through. But this is obviously a two-time DreamHack champion that Absolutely. we're looking at here. And it matters even more, right? Uh, being the sole TNS player, the sole TNS player that we have, being able to win the TNS tournament would be absolutely huge for him. Technically, he is the best player on our roster for every single game because he is our only player. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> but here we go. Button checks are over. It's time to jump in. Grand finals for Guilty Gear Strive here at TNS. Never would I think I would see the day my big armored boy <laughs> would be on this stage, especially not at TNS. Man. you got to keep that armor-clad faith going into this here. Of course, a boy does have one set to give, but we're not looking for that. Duel one. Okay, the round start, definitely gonna decide a lot here. Straight for the Mega Fist, Whoa! into the Pop Buster! A little bit of a jump scare. Bro, your health. All oh, right. and we tried to close the round immediately. Yeah, we were greedy. We wanted it done before we hit under 90 seconds, but that's not gonna be the case. Sends out the shield, flies right on in. 6K jumps over the Garuda. Nice reaction there from MFCR. Ooh, nice back dash there on the slide head attempt. Tries to go for the bazooka drop kick. Just again into slide head. Yep, goes for the hammer stop. Gets the punish. Goes for the burst, actually. Gonna try and put this one away. The wire seam response. 
Dragon Man. I mean, a boy is not out of the woods yet. There's the White Wild Assault coming through. Clash with the DB immediately into the FD cancel. Definitely smart. Garuda is a move that uh, clashes quite often, so most of the time you're going to see them holding FD. Dangerous position to be. Gets hit by the overhead, but no pickup. This time, though, it's going to connect and going to lead to the wall break here. MSCR with the Berserker Barrage closing out the first round. Dude, and it's such a crucial round, especially because a boy just came out through the kitchen sink and him right away. Yeah, able to not just get thrown off of your game by that. Great mental awareness here from MFCR. Tries to go for the Potemkin Buster again. The MFCR has sniffed it out twice in a row like that. I love how often we're going for it, though. I would rather it be the de default option than the mix. Oh, but throwing a run for it. That's good news, having those reactions on deck. By Wall Assault is going to push him all the way to the wall. Nice, again, not letting him get away with any of that. Goes for the flick, it's not enough to kill. Still, opportunity, looks for the chip. Here comes the super. Yeah, and blowing up the 2D attempt. You saw the 2D coming out there from MFCR. All right, 5H. Woo! Got him again, though, with the standing S. Whoa! <laughs> that was an interesting interaction there. He, of course, he was still airborne as the slide had hit the ground. Yeah, trying to follow up with the secondary uh, come up of armor. Gets the FD and is able to find the knockdown here. Doesn't hammer stop quite far enough. Looks for the pop buster, but a little too far. All right, toss once again. Lots of meteors sitting for MFCR. Nice with the deep like shield. Able to get a punish, but going right on in with the 2D again. And there's the overhead coming through. Game one should be going to MFCR with the right confirm. There it is, into the pizza cutter. You gotta be careful about how you're ending your block strings there. MFCR just mashes 2D at the end of that block string, reading the slide head there. And that is gonna be something that's gonna come up pretty often. Uh, especially because even if you end that block string and he doesn't go for the guess with the 2D, he can just reaction back that. So it's just, again, be careful about how you end your block strings. Don't be too greedy with it. Well, speaking of getting too greedy, we're being really greedy with these Potemkin Busters here. I mean, it is an alluring move, right, the amount of damage that it does. The MFCR has sniffed them out multiple times, trying to seal that option from a boy. Now that whole fireball hit. Still was able to get the cross up here, finds the throw. Momentum is building, and MFCR is able to take another round. That's a Leo round if I've ever seen one. Here we go, round start again. Wow, 6P into the wild assault, blowing through the slide head armor and getting the positive bonus. Hyper aggression here now, trying to smother a boy, give him no room to breathe. OTG first comes through, save yourself some room. Look at the meter here for MFCR. Something explosive definitely coming soon. Tries to go for the drop kick, not gonna work out, knocked down. All right, here we go, sending out the shield. Fly right on to the other side. Oh, it's sliding to get the punish. MCR didn't even need to go for the RC. Cross through, gets a connection. Looks for it again, is able to find the low. Here comes the break. Not enough to kill, but MFCR with that amount of meter, almost certainly gonna be able to close this round. Yeah, this is almost, this feels nigh impossible to make the comeback, but oh, yeah. I believe for a second there. I believe for a second. Uh, DP does come out two games in a row. Dual MFCR three. threatening the reset. Dual one. You are taking drinks of water dangerously close to the round, I MFCR. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Takes a hit for it, too. And there it is. Pop Buster finally lands. Into the BRC, going for the full confirm. Yeah, hold on to that first. <laughs> yeah, no reason to overextend there. The perfect comes through. Alright, wrestler situation again. I like a boy going for the 5P there. Just a really quick check, right? 5P of nice long reaching normal there for Contemkin. And the safe jab. Able to bait up the burst. Just trying to break the wall there too. Was looking for the hit grab. Gets the throw. Alright, Mega Fist backwards. He's gonna get caught with the 2D this time though. First to make sure you don't go through the wall. You don't want to give MFCR that positive bonus. Yeah, but unlike most of the broken Boats projectiles in this game, it doesn't go away when you hit him. And he is jumping so often here. Garuda isn't meaty enough, though. It's a little too early. 6P on your 5D attempt. Straight Prayers up. Straight into the heat knuckle. Distance closed. 
I thought he was going to Heat Knuckle again. I thought so too. Heat Knuckle does drop you right in front of the opponent. Or drop the opponent right in front of you, I should say. And there it is. Tap 5D. A boy getting a game on the board here. Tech okay, climbing on back. Obviously coming from the winner's side here. So if we could somehow... You can somehow squeeze those two out in a row. You get to walk away a champion. See here, again, the patience, long reaching 2D. MMCR doesn't really seem to have a, the range on lock for how long the Tempest 2D actually reaches. Oh, spending the burst. Understandable here, but you have a long road to go to make this comeback. That little step forward is such a good sell <laughs> for the Pop Buster. It is. You constantly think it's going to come, and then he hits you with a button right afterwards. Jesus, those cross ups left and right, everyone in between. Good IBFD. It doesn't buy you enough room here. RC to yeah. break the armor. And to the overhead. Goes for another. YRC comes through. Ooh, there it is with the 5K. Get the blue B combo. But now we're back to full screen. Next interaction could decide it. White Wall Assault just throwing out the punch once again. And the 5P recovers in time. Yeah, this time it's a jump instead of the 2D there. 5P was a genius option. And now we might be able to get two in a row here. A boy is threatening to even this up. We might go in one set. We'll have to see, though. There's the Pop Buster to punish the 2D. Right on it again, but wow, the respect that a boy just showed MFCR. He was able to wait, wake up, dash forward, get the back throw, and send him straight through the wall. Now things are looking a little bit more manageable for Miguel. Oh, maybe not. The back throw connects, and that should be enough here on the guaranteed damage Ooh. of the wall break. A boy somehow is clinging onto it. What a comeback. This could be done in one set. Unbelievable between these two. It could be, but you can't count MFCR out yet. We've seen him make these comebacks time and time again. A boy is looking to shut it down right now and take home the TNS championship. And I feel like normally when you see a player like Miguel who gets this much momentum, you would normally say when you go to the uh, to the reset, you would favor him completely. But a boy is going pound for pound right now. Yeah, there's the burst immediately on the counter hit, Garuda. You were going to get tossed. Ooh, speaking of getting tossed, looks for the pop buster, not quite there. Good amount of damage on the third. Wake up with burst. I like the adjustments that we're seeing, right? Waking up with burst, going for any option to get us out of the corner and deny MFCR the wall break. Oh, and the 5P! Not quite enough to get the kill, and the 2S is gonna do it! Tournament point for a boy! There's no way. Potemkin so close, a boy so close. Gets the whip punish, there you go, with the wild assault, very nice. Yeah, positive bonus coming through now. Already had 50 meter on deck. Gonna build up to 100. Full Sash. Good way to start it off. Straight into the super. I love the idea. Oh, Get the counter. No shot. Your life bar. No shot. You're dead. A boy does it. He is your TNS9 champion. Against all odds, a boy somehow manages to make it work and has the performance of a lifetime. What a roundabout story, Proxy. From the first Guilty Gear Strive online tournament of TNS, Potemkin being the champion, to the first offline back with Guilty Gear Strive, Potemkin champion again. Listen. Oh. Back and forth between the two, a boy. Incredible performance and what a comeback. All of the momentum was completely on MFCR's side, and somehow a boy manages to make it work. Incredible showing, and so well deserved. Give it up once again for your champion of TNS9, a boy. Wow. And also give it up for TNS's own MFCR as well for an incredible run through the loser side. Damn, so well deserved from both players. An incredible bracket. Hard to believe that Guilty Gear Strive here has come to an end, man. It was, uh, this was absolutely incredible. Bro. Just delivered on every single level. Uh, and I'm so glad that we got to do it. Absolutely. It is always fun every single time. Of course, we are going to be going to our award ceremony in a little bit. But yeah, just to throw it back again, the very first Guilty Gear Strive online bracket, if I'm correct, I believe, I believe that it was Potemkin it was who Jan. won. It.
Yeah, it was Jan in H-Town. And then coming full circle all the way to our first offline since COVID, coming back with TNS9. Potemkin does it again. You can't write a better story than that. Dude, absolutely incredible. It would have been nice to see TNS win TNS with MSCR. You know, obviously we got to hold our biases in on that one. But uh, in uh, with the rest of the top eight as well, it's good to see a lot of my favorite players get to come out and get to see Florida defend their turf as well. A uh, stacked Florida bracket. North Carolina coming through with Cheerio, obviously. Sure for Dude. And shouts to uh, to a boy repping Newhead as well. It's definitely very very cool to get to see you. Uh, I don't know, do that well and rep. Uh, obviously, a, a pretty cool group yeah. of people too. Incredible stuff there. You know, in the end, he had the armor clad faith. Came out on top. Potemkin winning another oh my massive God. offline bracket, bro. I <sighs> I can't believe it. I, I have so much footage to watch. <laughs> Cover. I have so much footage. To watch. This this guy's a Potemkin oh player God. too. So All right, he's a Potemkin player, so he is over the moon right Dude, now. Dude, yeah, it's so fun to get to watch. It's uh, it's exciting. I will say, just say for my own personal bias, it's uh, it's always cool to get to see my my character finally get to win something. But you know how it is. It looks like we've got most of our players on, so it'll be just a moment before we get into the award ceremony. But I do want to say again. Uh, just huge shouts to everybody that's involved with Guilty Gear. Uh, it has been incredible to see how much Guilty Gear uh, and their community has supported uh, not only us, but all of the online locals everywhere and all of the offline locals as well. So I just want to say uh, before we get up there to the medals, uh, huge shouts to all of you. Uh, please keep playing the game. Make sure you're supporting all of these online events that are going on and make sure you're still attending all of the events as well. Arc World Tour finals coming up soon. soon LCQ soon, soon. spots are available. You guys got it. I'm just I'm so proud of what uh, not only TNS has done with what we have here, but what Guilty Gear has done with uh, with the incredible community yep. and the incredible people we have. I never would have thought sitting there playing Exert sign, you know, back in 2014 that we would ever be in this position where yeah. uh, Guilty Gear is so massive at EVO, right? The Arc World Tour is so massive and thousands upon thousands, millions of people are playing Guilty Gear Strive. It's just so exciting to see and I feel so humbled by it. No, definitely agreed. But like you said, award ceremony coming soon. We're uh, just waiting on getting all of our players together, wrangling everyone together. You know how Absolutely. it goes at the end of these things. Of course, we got to get everyone up on stage to make sure they get their rightful, not medals, but their headbands, right? Of course. Initiate them into the ninja clan here. Hey, listen. The village hidden quite, in the sheets, <laughs> TNS. You can't, <laughs> you can't quite get the vest, but you know, it's okay. As well as that uh, amazing custom, uh, custom oh, trophy Yikoski. as well with the Akatsuki robe, which fire, is very, very cool to get to see. If there was ever a tournament that you were wishing that you were good enough to win, this is, a, <laughs> this is one of the ones. You don't too. know how many people I talked to and I told them what the final prize was, and like, oh man, now I gotta lock in. I gotta <laughs> lock in for <laughs> oh real. God, <laughs> oh my god. I do want to say also, while we have a little bit of time, huge shouts to production, Lucas, everybody involved. Uh, the teams have been incredible here in the stages. Uh, it's been really cool to get to see how well they've done, but Keeping everything running smooth. But speaking of running smooth, we're going to move it on over to the awards ceremony now. All right, guys, did you enjoy Guilty Gear Strive? I wasn't supposed to be working this weekend, but I pulled myself away from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to do these awards, so you're welcome. Anyways, with that, guys, let's give it up to our top eight for Guilty Gear Strive. In seventh place, give it up to Red I Am Not. Also in seventh place, give it up to Turb. In fifth place, give it up to Scambolini. Also in fifth place, give it up to Nitro. In fourth place, give it up to No Breaker 9000. In third place, give it up to Cheerio. In second place, TNS's own MFCR. And in first place, your champion of Guilty Gear Strive. And also, real quick, let's all wish a happy birthday to a boy. Happy birthday, a boy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, that's crazy. Your birthday champion, give it up one more time to a boy. <laughs> a boy, the birthday boy. <laughs> And this. Also in the nice jacket. What did you guys think of the Naruto theme this weekend? All right, give it up one more time to your Guilty Gear Strive top eight. 
And next up, we will have Under Night 2, top eight. Back to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Thank you. Bro, what a story. A boy, the birthday boy. I had no the idea. story <laughs> right itself. Happy birthday. <laughs> wow, absolutely incredible performance, though. That makes the story even sweeter to be able to come out on top of a character like Potemkin in such a stacked bracket. You couldn't ask for more here at TNS. Absolutely. But with that, it looks like we are going to move on to our next bracket. As we said before, it is going to be Uni 2 coming up next. So. Before we move on to that, I want to say again from the whole TNS family, thank you very much for uh, enjoying Guilty Gear Strive with us. Chopper, any final words to send us on? Of course, as always, remember, TNS, Guilty Gear Strive, forever.